How local is Bank Plus? We're here, here, and here. And we're with you here, here, and here. Wherever, whenever you need us. We make our banking decisions right here because local means more than a location. It means a commitment. All right, good afternoon. Welcome from campus of Bio Academy at Cleveland. John Benusiewicz, Madeline Maddox, Bill Long on the broadcast. Suresh will be here to do stats for us tonight. I have seen him in the gym. He's not made it up to the broadcast area yet. I think he's saving a seat for his wife. Now, we're going to... Uh, Work on the opposite side of the gym that we normally work on when we come to bio. We're on the home side. Lady Mustangs will be the home team tonight, so we have the home side of the stadium. Should be able to bring you a little better angle and view of the court. When we broadcast from the other side, we lose a big corner and parts of the court. So, hope it's a better broadcast for you tonight. Madeline, glad to have you with me tonight on this broadcast. It's always a pleasure, Mr. Bill. So... We're getting ready to start the conference North Half Tournament. The Lady Mustangs are the two seed, taking on Leak, the three seed out of the out of the south part of our district. Uh, North Halves again, as this is the North Half Tournament. And then the number one seed from our district is Rossville. They will play Lamar tomorrow at 6:30. The number. Uh, three seed out of our district is Bo. They play Simpson later tonight at 745. Then East Rankin, the number one seed out of the central district there, plays Heritage tomorrow at four. The winner of this game will play the winner of the East Rankin Heritage Friday at 515. The winner of Rossville Lamar and Simpson Bio will play Friday at four o'clock. So those are your setups on the brackets on the girls' game. Lady Mustangs have had a couple battles with Leak this year. Won them. Uh, opened up very early down at Leak this year. I think we beat them by a pretty good bit. Then came back in the gym. Had a little tighter contest there at Pilla, I believe. So the Lady Mustangs, we've got about five minutes and 50 seconds to this game will tip off. Would like to remind you of Thursday night. The Booster Club auction out at the airport at the Wade Hangar. Uh, happy hour starts at 5.30. The Social Does auction starts at 6.15. Dinner will be served at 7. Some very great good items out there. A lot of high school uh, and junior varsity balls signed. The baseballs, basketballs, footballs signed by the teams will be auctioned off. Some parking spots at soccer, boys and girls behind the goal. When the weather's cold, it's nice to sit in your car behind the goal and do it. So we'll have some of those. Uh, pretty good many guns that will be auctioned off that have been mostly bought by the Booster Club to be auctioned off. Also, Viking Range. Kevin Brown has given a, a uh, 36 uh, gas open burner range, six burners, stainless steel. Also, have given a ice machine that makes ice like the Sonic ice, they say. So, very nice gifts there from Viking and Kevin Brown to give it. One of our sponsors that advertises for all our games. Also, going to have uh, four chairbacks tickets and parking pass to the MSU Texas A&M game next October the 19th, thanks to Regions Bank. We'll have four infield baseball tickets for the Ole Miss game of your choice. You'll contact Clint Dunn to set up those. So uh, four infield baseball tickets to Ole Miss, your choice of game. Uh, we've got a two-night stay at the King and Prince Resort in St. Simon Island, Georgia. Compliments of MMI Dining, the Sturdivant family. We're going to have uh, three nights, two days inshore fishing at St. Louis for four people, donated by Justin Jeffcoat. Have a duck hunt for up to four at Mallard Rest and Webb. Uh, lodging meals and guided. Arrive in the afternoon, December 11th. Eat supper, morning hunt, full breakfast after hunt. Ammo included, donated by Craig Rozier. Uh, Going to have a dove hunt for two Labor Day, Saturday or Sunday at Cole Plantation in Isola. We'll have two floor seats, courtside basketball, Ole Miss versus South Carolina in Oxford 
this February 24th donated by Clint Dunn. So there's a lot of nice items that are not ag related. A lot of people call it an ag auction. So you don't have to be ag related to come to the auction. The dinner's worth your price in the booster club. Very fine dinner serve. So we'll remind you of some of that later. But again, that's this coming Thursday night. 5.30 social, 6.15 auction starts. 7 o'clock dinner will be served. There's our statistician coming up, Sharesh. <laughs> he does have his clipboard tonight, too. He does. Man, he he doesn't have bar yours. Sharesh is bad to lose his clipboard with us. but Well, thankfully, you have one at, uh, in hand <laughs> so, but, ready for him. Yep, we've got about two minutes and 40 seconds till the starting lineups will be announced in this contest and kicked off. Uh, Jim was very crowded with a double overtime game in front of us. Bo playing uh, Leak. Leak won it in double overtime, I believe, 58 to 55. Yes, that was right. At the end of the first overtime of that game, Leak had a shot to win it. The ball set on the front of the rim. I don't know. If Every you the whole gym was quiet on it, that shot. It, it just kind of hung on the front of the rim. Didn't know which way it was going to roll. It finally rolled off the front. So we went to the second overtime. A lot of excitement. Good high school basketball here on the campus of Bio Academy. First round too. First round. That was. It's what you want to see. Some good basketball. Yeah, a little difference this year. Our conference did not have a district tournament. Right. Uh, so your seating was determined by your conference play. Uh, and Starkville, girls or boys, did not advance into the north half. I didn't know the boys didn't. No. Wow. The Starkville boys did not as well either. So, advancing out our district was Rossville, number one seed for the girls. Pillow was the number two. Bio was the number three. And Heritage was number four. And so, that on that, then on the boys' side, Heritage wound up being the uh, number one seed. I'm getting back to it. I've got it in my phone. Um, I well, think I have the picture of it. I do. I went to the wrong place. I got it right here. I got a picture of it. Boys bracket, the number one seed was Heritage. Mm -hmm. The number two seed was Rossville. The number three seed was Bow, and the number four seed was Pilla. Mm -hmm. So the victory that Pilla had over at Starkville late boys was big. Absolutely. So, but, Hopefully uh, the boys match up for Pilla versus Simpson will be good tonight as well. I got a notice from somebody that says, spin the camera around so they can see my face. No, <laughs> keep the camera the other way, Mr. Benoist, which nobody needs to see my face. <laughs> so, but uh, the Simpson, I mean, again, the league boys won in double overtime over Bo uh, to change, to move forward. And uh, so... We're gonna have our starting lineups for both teams. Are you going overhead mic or are we going okay? We're gonna use the overhead mic for the announcement. Number three, Olivia Rudolph. Number five, Anna Ward Young. Number 14, Caroline Chio. Number 24, Ella Bell. At number 44, Katie Jones. And the home team on the scoreboard, Pilla Academy. Number five, Avery Howard. Number 10, Miley Moses. Number 14, Alana Hugo. Number 15, Lola Harris. And number 20, Elise Howard. All right, we're back live. Starting for Leak will be number three, Olivia Rudolph, a senior. Number five, Anna Morgan Young, 11th grader. Number 14, Caroline Cheatham, 11th grader. Number 24, Ella Bell, a senior. 44, Katie Jones, a senior. There's the green and yellow pom-pom being waved for you from the camera. Mustangs, Lady Mustangs are going to start five. Avery Howard, a senior. Ten, Millie Moses, a senior. Fourteen, Elena Hodo, 11th grader. Fifteen, Lola Harris, a senior. And number 20, Elise Howard, a senior. 
Lady Mustangs have faced Leak twice this year. Shres, you don't have the score for uh, 49-44. 34-44. 34, correct. 54-50. The 54-50 was a game at Pilla. They beat them pretty good early there, and then they came into Pilla. That tip is going to be controlled by Leak. His number five, Anna Morgan Young, comes up with the tip ball. Lady Mustangs open in a man-to-man -man defense. Driving as Anna Morgan Young throws up a high shot. Millie Moses goes on the board. They're going to call a walk on her. And she fell to the floor battling with Katie Jones for the ball. Be a turnover on the Lady Mustangs there. Inbound, and it will be Caroline Cheatham. Long pass back stolen by Elena Hodo as a desperation pass was made to do it. Elena Hodo is going to be foul. That foul, I believe, will be on 24, Ella Bell. Good steal by Elena Hodo as, as Leak tried to make a long desperation pass to forward the five-second call. And Elena Hodo read it, went and got it, brings it down the court, draws the foul. First free throw is up and good to give the Lady Mustangs the first lead of the game at one to nothing. Second free throw by Elena Hodo is good. Lady Mustangs are going to pick up full court man to man. Leak gets it into Caroline Cheatham. She's working against Millie Moses coming up the court. Caroline Cheatham's looking to get it down in the low blocks to Katie Jones. Gets loose, scores the basket. Avery fell down there, and they were able to get it into Katie. Elise Howard brings it up. Screen set for Elise by her sister, Avery. Lena Hodo takes it, gets cut off by Katie Jones, backs it back out. Looks like Leak's switching on the screen. Going to have an, another foul on Leak if, if Caroline Cheatham is going to knock Elise Howard to the floor. Caroline was playing a real tight defense on Elise, trying to not allow her the ball. Picks up that foul. Lola Harris gets it in to Elise. Lady Mustang swing it across. Avery Howard's going to put up a three from outside. No good. Rebound's going to claim by Lola Harris. Puts the shot back up. Millie Moses gets a rebound. Puts the shot up. Great scores the basket. Finish. Lady Mustangs get two offensive rebounds on that possession. Handling the ball out front to Anna Morgan Young. She gets it in the low blocks to Katie Jones. Spins, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound's going to be tapped out of bounds by Olivia Rudolph. Elise Howard gets it, passes it up the court as she had a tight defense on her by Caroline Cheatham. Most of the girls had backed off. Elena Hodo is going to travel in the corner as she went to try to drive. Her referee says she takes an extra step. I think he was right about that one. I, I couldn't see it for the. She, uh, she moved her feet before she dribbled. Mustangs on the tight man to man on the inbound. Lee gets it into Caroline Cheatham. 6.15 to play in the first period. Lady Mustangs lead it four to two. Long shot out front taken wow. by number five, Anna Morgan Young. Favorable roll. Gets a roll off the rim, scores a three-point basket down quickly to Avery. Puts up the shot from the side, no good. Rebound by Katie Jones. A little too strong by Avery on that shot. Leak takes her first lead of the game at five to four. 5.45 to play in the first period. Ball stolen by the Mustangs. Don't have a foul on Avery, number three, no. Olivia Rudolph. On that play, I don't know if you noticed, but Avery is very lucky that she didn't call for a foul because she came over the back of Katie and tried to, to attempt to steal the ball. Three fouls on Leak. No fouls on the Lady Mustangs yet. Lady Mustangs find Elise Howard going down the lane, puts it up, scores a basket to give them a lead back at 6-5. Katie Jones and Avery Howard are both battling down in the low blocks. They get it into Katie. 
She kicks it back outside to Anna Morgan Young, drives it down, kicks it in the corner, driving Ooh. with it to Olivia Rudolph. Yeah. Going to get yeah. called for the charge. It'll be Olivia Rudolph's second foul. Lola was there and set. Quickly, Leak is going to get in number two, Sarah Prince, an eighth grader, to replace Ella Bell. Millie Moses puts up a wow. three-point basket from outside. Not scored. used to seeing too many of those for Millie. Takes a nine-to-five lead. Coach Hatch chose to leave Olivia Rudolph in the game after she picked up her second foul. Shot taken outside from Katie Jones. Took so turned around. Avery gave her a little space. She took the long shot. Scores it. Lady Mustangs back to Lena Hodo. Her shot is no good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Olivia Rudolph. Going to have a jump ball outside as Avery ties up Sarah Prince on it. Jump ball will belong to the Lady Mustangs on alternate possessions. Leak control opening tip. That's the first jump ball. So the opening possession on the alternate air would be to the Lady Mustangs after that. Lena Hoda drives it down the lane, stops, puts it up, scores a two-point basket. Give the Lady Mustangs 11-7 lead. Good defense by Millie picking up full court and all the other girls. Lee gets it across midcourt. Gets it over in the corner to Prince. Back out top, Caroline Cheatham resets the offense for Leak. They work it into Caroline Cheatham, gets a shot, puts it up, and scores the basket. I think that was Katie Jones that shot that. I mean, yeah, Katie Jones, I apologize. Millie Moses going to put up wow. another three from the right side this time and score the basket. Two three-pointers Two in a by, row. by Millie. Eight points for her in the game as she had one on the offensive rebound, put it back in two three-pointers. 3-10 three to play in the first period. Lady Mustangs lead it 14-9. to nine. Shots blocked by Avery Howard in the low blocks. It's going to be tapped out of bounds by Leak. Going to have a lot of substitutions here. Is Jane Kimmel Buford is going to come in for the Lady Mustangs. Izzy Hodges comes in for the Lady Mustangs. And Addison Weems. <coughs> so the Lady Mustangs are going to play with Elise Howard, Elena Hodo, the two starters and three substitutes. Looks like they made a put Jane Kimmel in the game to try to guard number 44 on the other side. Jenna Allen has entered the game for the league. Jane Kimmel gets loose, puts it up left-handed, scores the basket. Go. That was a good job by Elise to see Jane Kimmel Got open. 30-second timeout taken by Leak.
Lease Howard's going to shoot a long three off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound by Marley Myers. Quickly out to Sarah Prince. Sarah Ooh. Prince. Drug a feet, but I don't think officials saw it. None of them were looking that way. Another long three taken by Leak. Going to be saved in bounds. And going to get it is Addison Weens, as Leak did, down the court quickly to Lena Hodo. Uncontested, lays it up and scores Great the basket. Great job Addison to see that pass up ahead. 18 to 14, 125 to play in the first period. Lady Mustangs lead it. Anna Morgan Young resets her offense for Leak. Coming and getting the ball is Sarah Prince. Looks at coach and wants to reset her play. Over to Sarah Prince, going to launch a long three, no good. Lee Howard with the offside rebound, long pass Ooh. down the court to intended for Izzy Hodges, stolen by Sarah Prince. Foul on Addison. Addison's going to pick up her second foul. That's something we cannot do is foul and turn it over. Lady Mustangs tried to make the long court pass. It was intercepted by Sarah Prince. Coming back in for the Lady Mustangs will be Millie Moses, Avery Howard. Going out will be Elise and Elena. And Elena go out to get a rest. 50 seconds to play in the first period. Lady Mustangs lead at 18 to 14. Down the lane, shot was blocked by Lola Harris as Jenna Allen tried to drive quickly out to Millie Moses. Lays it up from the right side, doesn't get it. Rebounds claimed by Katie Jones. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Addie Crow is in the game for Leak. Ball is turned over, stolen by Izzy Hodges on a bad pass. Quickly down the court to Avery Howard. Launches a three from outside, no good. Ball's going to be tapped out of bounds by Katie Jones. Be the ladies' Mustangs ball with 11.5 seconds to go in the first period. Well, they did a good job getting out of the way of that ball when she tried to hit it off of her. Lady Mustangs set up with Lola Harris to inbound it right at the end of the league bench. Going to have a foul. I think they're going to call a moving screen on Millie. Be the third foul on the Lady Mustangs. Millie was trying to get, I believe, either Avery or – Izzy open, and she moved while they were coming through. Leak gets it in to Sarah Prince, going to carry it up. Seven seconds to play in this period. Prince gets the ball over to Olivia Rudolph, driving, kicks it in the corner. Shot three-point basket taken by Jenna Allen to score it. I believe that's her third three-pointer of the first period to make it 18-17. to 17. At the end of the first period, his league got hot shooting the three-pointers late there. Bill, a hot shooting quarter for uh, both squads, 18 to 17, the Lady Mustangs lead, but uh, that three-pointer really cut into that lead. Uh, Lady Mustangs were 8 of 14 from the field overall, good shooting percentage, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, and 2 of uh, 5 from three-point land. Surprised to see Avery Howard not score any points yet, but leading the way, Millie Moses with eight points. Elena Hodo, 2 of 3 from the field, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. She's got six. Uh, Elise Howard, one of two from the field. She's got two. And Jane Kimmel Buford off the bench has two points. For the Leak squad, they are six of 13 from the field. And they've hit three three-pointers, including that one at the buzzer. Uh, Katie Jones, I believe her name's Katie Jones, has six points. And you mentioned the other young lady. Uh, uh, Marley Myers. Marley Myers. I believe she's got nine. Jenna Allen's the Jenna one that's been hitting the hitting three the yeah, on the yeah, 30. Yeah, 18 to 17. It's a shame that one of these teams is going to be one and done tonight. Uh, real quick note, I'm going to be interviewing Madeline Maddox at the half. She's an expert on this league pillow rivalry. Leak will have the ball to start the second period, trailing it by one point. Lady Mustangs come back with their starting five. Leak has Sarah Prince in, who did not start. Driving it down, putting up, missing the basket was Katie Jones. Rebounds eventually claimed by the Mustangs as it was tapped out wide. Looks like we're going to try to set up and run a play. Lady Mustangs get it in the lane of Hodo down low. She misses a shot. Ball is going to be tapped out of bounds by the Lady Mustangs. Lola and Elena almost got that offensive rebound back. Mr. Banu, I've gotten two texts. Okay. We're back, he says. Mr. Banu knew about it. Thanks for the text. 
7.24 to play in the second period. Lady Mustangs lead it 18 to 17. They feed it to Katie Jones. She kicks it back out in the corner. Long three-pointer shot over the goal. Claimed by Lola Harris. Quickly down to Millie Moses. Millie puts it up on the left side, misses it, but rebound by Katie Jones of Leak. Lola Harris is going to get a reach-in foul. That's the second time Millie has shot it and has gone in and out. Lola Harris is going to pick up her first foul. First foul on the Lady Mustangs in the second period. Coming back in is Caroline Cheatham to replace Sarah Prince for Leak. Caroline Cheatham will bring it up. Feed it to Livy Rudolph, taking it down the lane. Oh, they they're call gonna a foul. They're going to say Lena fouled her on the floor. I think Elena might have caught her arm when she was dribbling. So that's going to be called on the floor, the first foul on Elena Hodo. Got a substitution. Anna Morgan Young will come back in for league and go out will be Addie Crow. Again, a long pass, inbound stolen by Lena Hodo. Lena loses the dribble. Lola Harris picks up the loose ball, kicks it over to Elise Howard, puts up a three off the front of the rim. Long rebound is going to be claimed by Jenna Allen of Leak. Jenna Allen's going to launch another three from out front. No good. Rebound was by Katie Jones. Missed her shot, missed her rebound. Goes up and gets it a third time, puts it back and scores. That's what happens when you don't block out. Leak takes the lead at 19 to 18. I think she was standing by herself the whole entire time when she was getting those rebounds too. Avery takes it down the lane, puts up a shot on the left side to score it to give the Lady Mustangs the lead back at 20 to 19. The Leak fans were wanting to walk on that play, but I think that was a good move, good and clean move by Avery down low in the post. Olivia Rudolph will get it over midcourt for Leak. Millie Moses has the defense on Caroline Cheatham. Screen was set. Caroline takes it all the way down. Lady Mustangs are going to tap it out of her hand, knock it over the end line. Elise almost had that steal as she was driving. Elise went to the floor on the inbound pass. Leak was able to get it in. They get it to Caroline Cheatham. Katie I Jones. mean, Katie Jones, and I'm getting them mixed up. Katie Jones scores another basket in the middle. Ten points for her tonight. Right now, we don't even have we don't have an answer for her. Ball was intended for Millie Moses in the middle, stolen by Leak going back the other way. Looks like they're trying to get it down low, and they do. Yup. Going to score the basket and have a foul. Avery got pinned below, and then she jumped when she shot and hit her on the arm. Avery's going to pick up her first foul of the game, and as Katie Jones scores another basket. Avery keeps, keeps getting pinned down low in that block. Jane Kimmel Buford will come in the game to replace her. Leak takes the lead at 25 to 20 with 5.09 to play in the second period. Free throw is missed as Addison Weens has come back in the game for the Lady Mustangs. Cross court pass to Elena Hodo, puts up a three from outside, Good. scores it. Make the ball game leak leading 25 23 with 4.55 to play in the second period. Izzy Hodges has the defense on Caroline Cheatham. At least fought over the screen to get to number five. Then she got loose as Anna Morgan Young drives it all the way to the basket and scores the basket. Timeout taken by the Lady Mustangs. It's a quick point, Madeline, you and I did the league game at Leak, and Katie Jones was destroyed by Avery Howard. This is a different Katie Jones. She's got 12 points, really taking over the middle. Avery Howard on with only two. I think the difference here, uh, uh, Madeline, is basically this three-point shooting from the outside opens it up for Katie down low and makes a big difference. And uh, she's really putting on a show so far with the lead being 27 to 23, I believe it is now. 
I think it's 27-23, like you said. They have not put up that last two-point basket. They did the wrong thing, and then they fixed it. It's tied 23-23. Yeah, we're To go into what Mr. Suresh was saying, though, um, it looks like Avery's getting pinned down low, and we just don't have an answer, and Jane Kimball came in, and it looks like they're trying to set a screen up front, and hopefully we're able to get over it and not let her get in the ball in the post anymore. Lise Howard driving. She's going to be bumped and fouled by Caroline Cheatham. Be her second foul, first foul in this period on Leak. Addison Weens will inbound it for the Lady Mustangs under the go. We're going to have a substitution. Our official is correcting something at the scorer's table. Lady Mustang stack it for the inbounds pass. Long pass back to Elena Hodo. Moving screen. Going to be called on Jane Kimmel Buford to move and screen. Be the fourth foul. Jane Kimmel was trying to plead her case that she was just standing there and they ran through her, but we called a moving screen on her. Third foul on the Lady Mustangs in this period. They brought Marley Myers back in and giving Katie Jones a rest. Looks like Jane Kimmel's drawn the assignment on her. Good tight defense right now. Lady Mustangs have tightened up to man-to-man -to -man defense. Back it back out, Sarah Prince resets the offense. Going to set up a screen and three-point shot for her. No good. Rebound by Lee Howard. Out running with it. Lee's going to take it down the lane, put up the shot. No good. Quick rebound claimed by Olivia Rudolph. Got a run out. She's going to be blocked by Lena Hodo, but the rebound block shot was claimed by Anna Morgan Young. Puts it back up. Scores it for Leak. Lena didn't have any help when she went to go block that shot. Addison Wien takes it down, misses the shot. Rebound balls on the floor. Gonna be a jump ball tied up in between Jane Kimmel Buford and Marley Myers. I think the possession error is for Pillow. Should be Pillow. Leak had it to start the second period. Coming back in is Katie Jones. She got a little breather there. Marley Myers gives her some time on the bench. Elise Howard will inbound it for the Lady Mustangs. Looks like Avery came back into the game as well. Elise Howard shoots a long three. Rebound's going to be claimed by Avery. She finds Elise underneath the goal. Elise is going to be fouled from behind by Anna Morgan. Young will be her first foul. Two shots from the free throw line coming from Elise Howard. Second foul on Leak in this period. First free throw is missed. Gonna be a lane violation. I don't know who it is. First lane violation came on five of Leak, and then a Lady Mustang came in. So the lane violation gets called on the first move in. It's a good thing, because at least missed both for free throws. 258. She Miss misses the third. the third. Jane Kimmel gets a rebound. Going to be a jump ball as Katie Jones ties her up. Possession error belong to Leak. Leak gets it into Marley Myers, who's entered back in the game. They've got both her and Katie Jones in the game, both of their inside players. Ball's tapped out of bounds by Avery Howard. I was hoping we were going to get a 10 second call on that. Katie Jones will inbound it for Leak. Easy Hodges has a defense on Caroline Cheatham, who was in it. They get it in the low blocks to Marley Myers. She's going to lose it over the end line. Lady Mustangs are playing with Jane Kimmel Buford and, and Avery Howard. The horn blows, but the official says play goes on. Avery drives down, finds Jane Kimmel down low, puts up a shot, scores Great a shot. basket. 
over Marley Myers. That was a great shot. She got good position on her and shot it over her head. 27-25, league leads it with 2.21 to play in the second period. Shot taken inside, Ooh. goes in and out. Going to be yep. tapped out of bounds by Avery Howard. Avery's lucky she didn't get over the back on that. Very, very lucky in that. Yeah, so it's going to be leak ball underneath the goal. Caroline Cheatham will inbound it for leak. Back in the game is Jenna Allen. Izzy's on the floor. Three-point shot taken by Caroline Cheatham. No good, but rebounds claimed by Leak. Ball is going to be stolen by Lise Howard. Finds Addison Weems, takes it down the left side, scores and the basket. One. Jenna Allen is going to pick up her first foul. It'll be an and one, as Madeline said. Ball game's tied up 27 27, 152 to play in the second period. Free throw is good by Addison Weems to give the Lady Mustangs a lead at 28-27. Ball stolen on the other end by Addison Weems. Addison taking it down. Yeah. She knew she was supposed to travel through it back and hit uh, Izzy in the back, and then Addison Weems is going to pick up a foul going to get it. It'll be Addison's third foul. That's when you either go up with it or you dribble it back out to reset the offense. Unfortunately, she didn't do that. Looks like she's going to come out of the game, and Lola Harris is going to come back in. Lola's going to enter the game back as Addison picks up her third foul. Ball's inbound. It gets back over to Sarah Prince, bringing it up. Lola Harris has a defense on her. 130 to play in the second period. Lady Mustangs lead it 29 to 27. Yeah. Avery's going to get a reach-in foul. It'll be they, her second foul. They called that one, that touch foul, but they didn't call that over the back. It was right in front of the ref. Avery's got to be careful not to pick up a third. It's It should be six on my book. <laughs> it should be six? Wow. Going to get two free throws. So, y'all are correct. Bai was trying to help us out, but. 127 to play going to the free throw line will be Sarah Prince. 127 in the second period. First free throw is no good. Lady Mustangs lead it 29 to 27. Her dad is not happy about that free throw miss. Officials are going, they're going to try to have a conference, see whether that was a three-point shot, but that was a slap at yeah, the foul slap line. The, yeah, it was a foul on Avery. At the, at the, right at the foul line. Which should be two. It was no shot even being taken. Technical. We're going to have a technical. On who? Hey, Prince went to the line, but I think it may have been number three that was fouled. So they may be calling a technical on the wrong girl going to the line. Huh. It may be the wrong girl went to the line to shoot the free well, throw. Usually, usually the refs will tell which one goes to the line. They don't usually have to figure that out themselves. Uh, That's why I was I, confused because usually the, the refs like, you're the one shooting, you know, and uh, they didn't do that in that situation. I think the foul may have been committed on number three. Sarah Prince went to the line. Yeah, I thought it was somebody taller for sure. Now yeah. it, now number three goes to the line to shoot free throws will be Olivia Rudolph. Lu Olivia Rudolph makes the one free throw. The first free throw was missed by Sarah Prince. So now Pillow gets to shoot. Technical fouls and will have the ball. Makes it 29 to 28. Pillow will be at the line to shoot free throws. Looks like Avery's going to take them. They should be assessed a foul, right? Yes. They're not really keeping up with me. <laughs> Looks like the other group of refs over there are trying to figure it out as well. 
I don't. I guess that foul would it be assessed on Sarah Prince? Yeah, the technical should be a foul. They 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 just put it on the board. It's going to be the four foul. I'm not sure if it's assessed on Sarah Prince or assessed on the team, but it's four fouls on Leak in that period. Avery has made the first free throw. Makes the second free throw. The Lady Mustangs will get the ball. Elena Hodo, Millie Moses are going to come in the game. Izzy Hodges is going to go out. I think the technical would be on Sarah considering that she went to the free throw I, line. So I think that the foul would be yeah. on her. We'll see when they, if she has another foul what they put on the board. Lady Mustangs are playing with Jane Kimmel Buford, Lola Harris, Elise Howard. Elise drives. Elise does good. a good drive, good set up and block out by Jane Kimmel Buford to set that for Elise to drive to give the Lady Mustangs a 33-28. Balls on the floor reclaimed by Leak. They try to get it down in the Kimmel. blocks to, uh, yeah. to Katie Jones. It was tapped by Lady Mustangs, but the foul is going to be on Lola. Uh, no, it's on Jane Kimmel. She went. She tipped the ball, went back for it, and somebody on Leak fell down, and they called the foul on Jane Kimmel. Be her second foul. Free throw is in and out by Sarah Prince. One minute to play in the second period. One free throw to come for Sarah Prince. It's good off the front of the rim. Lady Mustangs inbound it quickly. Elise Howard's bringing it up. Kicks it across half court to Jane Kimmel. Jane Kimmel gets the ball, goes to pass it to Elise Howard. Elise had broke the other way. It's going to be a turnover on the Lady Mustangs. 48.3 seconds to go. Lady Mustangs lead it 33 to 29. Coming back in is Anna Morgan Young to give Caroline Cheatham a break for Leak. Lady Mustangs playing the man to man. Millie Moses cuts off the drive down the lane. Leak moves it back out top, handling nice Jenna Allen. Takes it down, throws it up left-handed, scores the basket. We had no help side defense on that drive. 33-31, 23 seconds to play in the second period. Lola Harris swings it over to Lena Hodo, fakes it, drives back to Jane Kimmel Buford. Jane Kimmel drives, spin move, puts it up, scores the basket. Took a shot to the side to face, but still was able to put it up. Seven seconds to go, Lady Mustangs lead it 35-31. Leak's driving, kicks it back out. A three-point basket on the way for Leak. Leak hits three-point baskets at the end of the first period. And second period. Second period lady, to cut it to a one-point lead for the Lady Mustangs each time. Two three-point buzzers at the end of the first period and the second period for the Lady Mustangs. I see the officials over looking at an iPad. I think they're going to count that basket. I think they're trying to keep up with the fouls, and there might be some mistakes on who. They might be questioning whether uh, Prince got that foul or who who they assessed that foul to. Just real. I'm going to do stats real quick, then I'm going to interview Madeline at the half, Bill. But for the uh, second quarter, we shot 6 of 11 from the field, a good f- uh, field goal shooting percentage of 54%. 3 of 5 free throw line and 0 of 1 from three-point land. Didn't take nearly as many three-pointers in that second quarter. Uh, for the contest, Pill Academy is shooting a brisk 14 of uh, – 25 from the field, really good field goal percentage. Three, uh, they are from free throws, they're five of seven. You know, that's good. They're only shooting 55% as a team for the year. That's good to see that percentage. And they are two of six from three-point land. Leading the way is Elena Hodo with nine points. But I'll tell you what, Jane Kimmel Buford off the bench, three of three from the field with six points. Really coming on strong the second half of the year. Avery Howard with four points. Elise Howard with four points, and Addison Weems with three points off the bench. The bench, nine of those 35 points. And again, Bill, I can't before I interview Madeline, I can't emphasize to you enough, it is such a shame that these two powerhouse programs and these two powerhouse teams are playing in the first round of the north half. One of these teams is going to be one and done. That just doesn't seem fair. What do you think? 
Well, it's the way it draws out in the bracket. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, they came in. We came in as a two seed. They came in as a three. So it's all determined how you play it. And they had a different district conference to determine their seed. Exactly. And ours was out of it. So if I've got it correct, there were seven lead changes in that first half. Unbelievable. I'm going to give the headset to Madeline for the interview. Okay. Madeline? All right. I'm joined by Madeline Maddog Maddox, a uh, – you talk about somebody who's seen some league pillow action. You've been a part of a lot of this league pillow action. Observations on that first half, 35-34. we got a barn burner in Cleveland. I think we've been playing good defense relatively, but, you know, I don't think that we can continue to let Katie Jones get us low in the post. With a, she has beat us down low all game. We have been behind her, and that's where Avery and Jake Kimmel have picked up most of their fouls, and they need to front her coming up, hopefully. Yeah. Coach Carpenter is talking to them about that. They need to front her in the post in order to keep from getting those fouls from behind her because Avery is trying to reach around her, and then Jane Kimmel's trying to reach around her, and they've committed two fouls that way. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, they scored 34 points in that first half. Their uh, league did. They scored 34 points in the whole game that you and I called over in Madden, <laughs> yeah. Mississippi. Uh, and I'm just glad to see Pilla scoring 35. You know, this is a gym that we – you know, you know about we, this. We've we struggled struggle offensively. In. We have. Look, it's amazing over the last uh, four years the number of contests we've had. i got a little list here. I want to get some of your memories. In uh, 2020, after we won the overall in the fall, we played against Leak. It was literally the first game of the year in 2020. It was the fall of 2020. We were still in soccer mode. We had just lost that state championship game yeah. to Hartfield, and we lost a heartbreaker by two. And that was a game, I, I, you know, uh, uh, Caroline Brock fell down injured. We thought we'd, we'd lost her for yes, a whole year. Yes, we did. Ankle, right? Yeah, when Caroline Brock cries, you know it's hurting. But she was able to come back from that one. But we lost a tough one there. I remember that game. Kaylee Jones and Marion Prince had like 20 or 25 points each in the first half. Yeah. They were on fire. Uh, uh, any memories from that contest? Uh, I don't think I really got to play, yeah. so <laughs> I don't really remember it that much. Gotcha, but. gotcha. Well, Pilla came, yeah. I mean, uh, Leak came to our gym. They were on a long winning streak, yes. and we beat them. I uh, can't really tell you about that game either because I think I had COVID. You had COVID. You missed that content. No, well, no, no, I was in the game, and I think I had COVID oh, during great. the game, that's and my good, mind good. was foggy. Yes. I'm glad it's been three years, so we don't have to go ahead and get convicted for yes. uh, spreading COVID throughout MAIS. <laughs> yeah. But we won that contest 74-67. And then the heartbreaker. We play them in the finals of the North State. Many contended that that year, Leak and Pillip were by far the best two teams in the state of Mississippi, and we had we had a full packed gym and all that. Kaylee Jones. Kaylee down. Jones. End of the uh, second quarter, I believe it was, on a fast break by Leak, yeah, and, and the rest uh, is history. She had went to rebound and I actually remember the play. She went to rebound it. She fell down on the ground. I had gotten the ball, and then I turned over the ball. <laughs> and so it's your fault. Basically, I okay. think. Well, she went for the rebound and then fell, and then I turned it over and then the play stopped. Well, I looked over. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're laughing about it, but that, that changed history. Uh, Leak yeah, went yeah. on to win the state championship that year and overall that year. But that was, it was also the year that when we went to overall, we had to play at the other opponent's gym. So it was very tough having to go J.A. J.A. first round. Kaylee. Yeah, it was tough. And we lost a heartbreaker. Who will ever forget the end of that yes, contest? Yes, uh, then the next year, uh, they, uh, a, a lot of those girls from the uh, overall team, the starting five, had uh, graduated, and we went to play uh, Leak in, in 2021 in the fall. We lost by 15, uh, but then we turned around and played them at Leak, and we lost 48-45. Mm -hmm. But then we beat them in an overtime thriller, ending a long, long winning streak by Leak Academy, beating them over uh, overtime thriller. Uh, Sarah Presley Howard had 15 points in the first quarter. I'll yes, never forget did. that that I performance. That. Uh, that, and you had a great game as well. And that was 2021. And then we turned around and played them in the finals of the North State over at Heritage and won Absolutely. a thriller. Again, we thought these are the two best teams in the state of Mississippi. We pulled that one off. And then we threw a nothing burger at Capaya. Don't <laughs> against talk Capaya. about it. Don't we, talk. Actually, you know what? I did for the first time watch that film the other night. Oh, it brought me a that? little closure. Wow. But uh, hopefully, I mean – I don't want ever anyone to ever experience right. that again, losing first round of a tournament. It was that we shouldn't have lost. Right. It's just a lot of regrets that you live with every single day about well, it. Well, you have a lot of, a lot of good good memories as well. Yeah. 2022, Leak beats Pillow at Leak to start the season off. Then Pillow Leak beats Leak to, you know, in our new gym, to, right. uh, our second game at the new gym, I believe. We beat them and a huge crowd was there. I think we beat – didn't we beat them by a pretty good bit? Miriam was out did. and yep. Katie Jones was out that game. So and they had a long winning streak there and yes. they got blown out by us. 
And then 2023, we destroyed Leak at, at Leak. It was 49-34, but it wasn't that close. Right. Uh, Leak was young. They they replaced most of their starters. Katie Jones couldn't get it going inside, and they couldn't get their they couldn't handle our that press. Just, yeah, it just speaks a lot about how much you progress as a team yes. throughout the year. They couldn't handle our press in that contest. Look at them now. They're exactly. handling our press. It's amazing. Of course, they got one of the best coaches in the business, and Amanda Hash. Yeah, just, you, sometimes you just have to figure out your players, and you just have to figure out your team. And right. obviously, Leak's done that, and they've done a great job yep. so far. Yep. Two point victory by Pilla. Uh, at Pill Academy, uh, the league fans like to talk about Sarah Presley going. I'm not Sarah Presley. Uh, 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 Howard going over line. We've got a minute left here, and then uh, so we lead the overall series six to five. That's the that's wow. the overall in the last I three years. I'm gonna go back to Bill now. Here you go, Bill. All right, we're back. I wanted to, sorry, Madeline, to cut y'all a little short, but we got less than a minute to go in this. Uh, don't forget about the ag auction Thursday night out at the airport at the hangar. We've got boys soccer, 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon on the campus playoffs. Uh, so I'm not sure who the soccer team plays, but they play at 3 o'clock. Play Heritage. So Lady Mustangs are going to start this half leading by one point. So we are going to. Uh, I'm trying to respond to some texts. Again, Ag Auction, Thursday night, 5.30 social, 6.15 auction starts, 7 o'clock dinner served at the airport. Uh, hangar of weight out at Greenwood of Floor Airport. A lot of great items there. I'll bring some of them to you in between the games again. Uh, come out and support the Booster Club. A lot of people call it an Ag Auction, but there are a lot of items in there other than Ag, so it's a lot for a lot of people. A lot of options that I like. Yeah. <laughs> Especially uh, those Ole Miss baseball yeah. tickets. So we're getting ready to start. The Lady Mustangs will have the ball to start the second half. Lead at 35-34. Had seven lead changes in the first half of this game. Coach Carpenter is giving his team some last-minute instructions. Officials at the score table having a discussion. I wonder if they're discussing if it was on that foul that we were talking about. I had the Lady Mustangs at one more foul. Than, than they ever had up. I'm talking about the one about uh, Sarah Prince, you know. I wonder yeah. if they're discussing if she has a foul or not. I'm wondering if they count the, discussing the total number of fouls. Yeah, that's true. On the, on the I Lady Mustang. Uh, I had us at one more. When they had three on the board, I had us at four. So, I'm assuming they, sh we shot, they should have shot free throws a whole lot sooner then. Probably should have shot them one time sooner than they did. That's the uh, scorekeepers and the scores table table's fault, though. So officials, two officials are at the scores table. Uh, Coach Hodges is. I can see barely top of her head at the scores table, and I see Coach Hatch I bet from, that, from I Leak at the scores table. They may be checking books, is what I'm probably thinking. They, definitely they, for sure. They are. I'm wondering if if Coach Hatch questioned the number of files, and now they're comparing books to see. And come up with something. So we're going to have a little delay. You hate for errors for like this to happen because it just delays the game. Yep, the momentum of the game is getting ready to go. So if they're doing it, I'll cover a few of the ag auctions. Again, we're going to have all kind of basketballs, footballs, baseballs all signed. We're going to have some parking passes behind the goals for boys and girls soccer. It will be given. We do have two items donated by Viking Range and Kevin Brown, a 36-wide, six-burner gas stainless steel range, a 15-nugget ice machine with a right hinge door panel on it, ice machine that's being donated by Viking Range. Uh, three nights in, in, in any of your Hampton Inn choices donated by Suresh in the Hamptons in the Delta. We're going to have... Uh, Three Kenwood Mobile radios donated by LaFleur Communications. Uh, Booster Club has bought a lot of game, guns to be put in it. Uh, we've got four infield baseball tickets, the Ole Miss game of your choice, and Oxford donated by Clint Dunn. Four chairback tickets to the Mississippi State-Texas A&M football game next October the 19th, uh, donated by Regions Bank. Got uh, a youth duck hunt for two youth on a weekend. Uh, Wilson Britt is donated. 
that. Officials now are leaving the table, talking to the coaches, Amanda Hatch. Looks like we're about ready to play. I wonder what they decided. I don't know. We'd have to go look at the scores book and see or something. I wish we were like ESPN. You know, the refs call well, us tell to tell us ESPN what's going on, but we're too far up in the nosebleeds up here. The refs are not worried about us here. <laughs> Lady Mustangs are going to start it with the second half. League remains in a man-to-man defense. Elise Howard going to be driving down the lane. She's going to be fouled by Caroline Cheatham. Hopefully they get the fouls right now. That is her third foul. First foul in the third period. Coach Hatch Late. has chosen to leave her in the game. Avery Howard's shot is blocked by Katie Jones. Back out to Elena Hodo, puts up a two-point basket, scores it. Good offensive rebound by Elena and finished by her. Ball's tapped on the inbounds pass. Leak's going to claim it trapped over in the corner as a girl from Leak. Timeout time out taken by Coach Hatch of Leak. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs have scored one basket in this third period to lead it 37-34. Leak had to take a quick timeout as they got trapped in the corner on after an inbounds pass. It was tipped. So far, we've come out to a better start this half. It was a pretty good block down there by Katie Jones yeah, on she, Avery. Avery she went got down. absolutely rejected. But Elena Hodo went and got it and put it back up and scored it. Hopefully Avery returns the favor. <laughs> League's going to have the ball on the sideline right at the end of the pill of beans. All the girls were confused where it was going to be put in. Lady Mustangs back up Lola. Millie Moses to block any long bound pass. I assume the ball was tipped over the sideline by the Lady Mustangs. Leak will inbound it again right at the end of the pill of beans. Ball's Locked tapped out again. out again by the Lady Mustangs to be inbounded by Leak. It comes up the sideline a little farther right in the middle of the pill of beans. Still can't see it very well, but. It's a lot better than when we broadcast on the other side. Absolutely. Lee gets it in to Caroline Cheatham, brings it up. Millie Moses has the defense on her. Screen was set. Lady Mustang switch. Again, another switch on the screen out high by the Lady Mustangs. Lee kicks it in the corner, three-pointer on the way. Uh, taken by Anna Morgan Young, but saved on the backside by Olivia Rudolph back out top. Three-point basket taken by Lee. Rebound was by Katie Jones. Oh, it looked like Lola went to block her out and completely missed her, and she got the offensive rebound and scored on that play. Cut it back to a one-point lead for the Lady Mustangs. Avery Howard gets cut off, swings it out to Elena Hodo, going to take it down, lay it yeah. up, score the basket. Lola got a step on Katie Jones, took it all the way to the goal, scored it. Ball's inbounded. I think if Lola would have turned around, she, she could have caught it. it. She didn't see it. Bringing it up to court is Anna Morgan Young. Picks up her dribble. It's knocked away by Lola Harris. Lola's got to be careful not to reach in. Lola got knocked backwards. Driving Katie Jones is going to put it up and yeah. score the basket. It was smart by Avery not to try to go in and block that shot, though. So Avery did a good job trying not to get the foul. Back to a one-point game. 6-10 to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs lead it 39-38. Avery drives to the right. Puts up a shot. No good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Anna Morgan Young. Kick it down in the block to Katie Jones. She's double teamed. Well, She's going to travel yeah. with it. Millie Moses dropped back to double team her. Lena Hodo and Millie Moses, I believe, had the defense on her. She dropped back. Lola Harris will inbound it for the Lady Mustangs. Full court pressure by Leak. Get it into Avery. She gets it over midcourt. Brings it to the top. Lola's trying to set a screen for her. Avery's going to take it all the way down. The oh. foul's going to be on the floor on a reach in, I believe, on number five, Anna Morgan Young. Be her second foul of the game, second foul on Leak in this third period. 5.45 to play. Lady Mustangs lead it 39-38. Lady Mustangs getting back side to Elena Hodo, missed a shot. Avery, I mean, Lola Harris got the rebound, put it up, missed it. Millie Moses gets oh, it, passes Lord. it out to that. 
Going to be a foul on the floor as Elena Hodo missed the shot. It's going to be on Lola on the block out, I believe. They were blocking her out, and she, I think, pushed somebody to the ground maybe. I'm not sure. I couldn't really tell. Going to be the first foul on Lola Harris. Second. So, I mean, second foul, first foul in this half. Still a one-point game. Yeah. Gonna be, Avery's going to get a trip, just stepped in the wrong place, and Avery's going to pick up her third foul of the game. Jane Kimmel Buford's up to come in quickly. That is not what we wanted to happen. Well, on the score, hey, on the scoreboard it said that she has two. That may be where I was off one foul in that first half, so we'll take it. That's <laughs> where we were off in that first half. <laughs> Apparently not. Katie Jones has it at the free throw line. Ball's going to be lost over the sideline. It's Sayer Prince couldn't handle it. Good defense by Lady Mustangs to cause that turnover, though. Lise Howard is going to take it down the court for the Lady Mustangs. Lena Hodo was open in the lane on it. I don't think Lise could get the pass over a defender. Screen was set for Lise, puts up a three from outside. No good. Lena Hodo gets a rebound, spins, puts good it back up, scores Lena. the basket. She came in flying out of nowhere. Give the Lady Mustangs a 41 to 38 lead. Full court defense by the Lady Mustangs. Bringing it over midcourt will be Sarah Prince. Kick it back to Sarah. Katie Jones sets the screen for a three point basket. No good. Lee Howard with a rebound long pass out to Jane Kimmel Buford. Misses the shot. Millie Moses gets a rebound. Good job to back it out by Millie that time. Good pass by Elise. Elise found Lola Harris down low, yep. gets a shot up and scores the basket to make it a 43-38 to 38 game with 38 seconds timeout taken by Leak. We're taking advantage of Leak not blocking out right now, converting it into points. So 4-16 to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs have scored eight points. Leak has scored four. This game's turning out to be a shootout between Elena Hodo and Katie Jones. Katie Jones with 16 points for the uh, uh, Leak Academy uh, squad, and uh, Elena Hodo with 15 points, including six in this quarter, uh, six of the eight points for the Lady Mustangs. Avery Howard still with only four points. We're not sure how many fouls she's got. Uh, she's struggling, and Elise Howard with only four points as well. You figure one of those Howard girls is going to start going, but right now we're resting on the laurels of Elena Hodo, Bill, thinking that she's having a good game. Lena started off the game good for the Lady Mustangs scoring and has continued on with it. Lady Mustangs have continued to stay in the man-to-man -man full court. It's a lot of times we go to the uh, trap. I don't know. We, we thought it may be three fouls, but the scoreboard says two. But I wonder that, if that's what they were fixing at the beginning of the game was the fouls on Avery as well. I was off early in that second period on the number on the board. Lady Mustangs pick up man-to-man -man full court. That's five, two, that's five. Leak gets it in to Katie Jones. She gets it quickly back over to Olivia Rudolph, bringing it up. Sarah Prince is going to take steps as she comes over mid-court with it. Be a turnover on Leak. 4.08 to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs will inbound it right in front of the scorer's table. Elise Howard kicks it over to Lena Hodo. Get it to Jane Kimmel Buford. Kicks it back out to Lola Harris. Shoots a three from outside to give the Lady Mustangs an eight point lead at 46 to 38. That was a good job by Jane Kimmel to see her in the corner after she had cut and received the ball. Lady Mustangs, Elise Howard has defense out front on Sarah Prince as she starts a motion at offense. They kick it back out. Number 30, Jenna Allen has it. Doesn't take the three. She was hot in the first period with threes. Ball was trying to get in down low to Katie Jones. Was tapped out by Jane Kimmel Buford. Leak is trapped out high. Gonna have a foul on Lola Harris. Her second, right? Third. Third, wow. Third foul on the Lady Mustangs in this period. 
They have yet to put it up on the board They haven't put it on the board, but I have three fouls on Lola. Do they? Looks like they're going to call a foul on Elise. A push. They haven't. They still haven't put that foul on the board. Elise is going to pick up her first foul. This is official. It is called all the fouls on the inbounds pass. He's been looking for blockouts, and yeah. that definitely is on his radar tonight. Looks like Izzy Hodges and Addison Weems just came into the ball game for Millie and Lola. Pass was saved on the sideline by Sarah Prince. They get it to Katie Jones, a loose underneath the goal, scores the basket. Lady Mustangs fronted her. They threw it over the top. Katie puts it up and scores it to make it a 46-40 to game at 2.55 to play in the third period. Unfortunately, Jamie will try to lunge at that ball, and that's when they threw it over the top. Going to have a foul on Olivia Rudolph on the floor. Be the third foul on Olivia Rudolph, third foul in this period on Leak. Ball's inbounded to Elise Howard. Sets her offense up. Lady Mustangs are trying to find a cutter down the lane. Elise fakes a three, backs it out, does put up a three. Off the front of the rim. Going to be saved back in. Easy oh. misses the shot. Ball, Lena Hodo is going to get a foul, I believe, when yeah. she comes back in and she knocked Katie Jones a floor. Be second foul on Lena Hodo. Fifth foul on the Lady Mustangs. She's going to be shooting. So, Katie Jones will go to the line to shoot two. So Katie Jones will go to the line for two free throws. 2.35 left to play in the third period. Leak will shoot free throws the rest of the way. First free throw is off the rim and no good. Second free throw is up and good to make it a five-point game, 2.35 to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs find Elena Hodo down the lane, kicks it back out to Jane Kimmel Buford, no good. Lise Howard with the rebound, goes in, puts up the shot, misses it, rebound by Katie Jones. Stolen back by Lady Mustangs, Jane Kimmel yeah. Buford got a hand on it. Addison Wing gets it, gives it back to Jane Kimmel. She's going to draw a foul, be, I believe, on number 30, Jenna Allen. It was a great job by Jane Kimmel to recognize that Katie Jones held the ball above her head and she was able to easily steal it from her. I don't know if the scoreboard's broken or they're just not putting the numbers up there anymore, but I believe that foul was on Jenna Allen, number 30. First oh, free throw yeah. by Jane Kimmel, Buford, good. The only reason why I wish they would put it up on the board is for the players' sakes to know how, much, how many fouls they have. It's very hard as a player not to know how many fouls you have. Jane Kimmel's second free throw is in and out. Went in the rim, spun around, came out. Katie Jones comes down with the rebound. Two minutes and five seconds to play in the third period. Lady Mustangs lead it 47-41. Lena Hodo's drawn a defensive assignment on Katie Jones this trip down. She's doing a good job of keeping her above the free throw line. Uh, it's getting that, a little rough down there. Is, I'm not really sure why they haven't called a foul yet. Katie Jones gets loose, puts it up, going to be a foul behind. I believe it will be on Lena Hodo. If it is, it will be her third foul. Did they hold up one for? I couldn't see the official's hand. They don't put it on there anymore. Well, then who did they put it on? I, I don't I, get, I don't know was Addison there maybe because he did a one but I couldn't see was a four or three what he had up. First free throw was good by Katie Jones. Second free throw off front of the rim no good. Hustling getting the ball is Levy Rudolph. Easy Hodges steals it back gets it over to Addison Weens. Addison gonna take it down the lane throw it up. Missed the shot off the front of the rim. Rebound claimed by Leak. Should have aimed for the backboard on that shot. Again, they get it into Katie Jones. She's going to take it in the middle. Gets a step up. Misses the shot. Battles Marley Myers. 
Hunter for the rebound, but coming out with it is Elise Howard. Elise going to take it all the way down, put it up. Rebound's going to be claimed by Leak. They running. are letting this game play on, I know that. There could have been at least three fouls in that. Very physical. Long another three-pointer outside that time from Jenna, but long rebound's going to be claimed by Katie Jones of Leak. No block out on that shot. Katie Jones gets it again. Lena Hodo is going to pick up her foul on it. Be her fourth foul of the game. Addison Weems was kind of in the way for Elena to play her defense. Yes, yeah, she was. She was trying to figure out who was on who, and she ultimately Block. caused Elena to get the foul because she wasn't paying attention. She got she blocked Elena off the play. And then Elena reached in to get the foul. Elena probably should have just let the shot go up instead of trying to block it. Lola Harris is going to come in and replace Addison Weems. Elena's also very fortunate that she didn't get a technical call because she slammed that ball to the ground in frustration because of Addison. Yep. Katie Jones misses. Elena Hodo gets a rebound with it. Elena Hodo takes it down the lane, puts it up. Her shot's going to be blocked by Katie Jones. Of all the fouls to call, they call that one. <laughs> Elena Hodo will go to the line for two. I believe that will be the first foul on Katie Jones. Well, we wouldn't the, know because the scoreboard's the, not working. The fifth foul on it. Elena Hodo is going to put up a free throw to make it 48 to 44 with 41.4 seconds to play in the third period. One more free throw to come. They took Katie Jones out of the game. Second free throw is good. 49-44, 38 seconds to play in the third period. League brings the ball up. Izzy Hodges has the defense on Jenna Graham. She drives, misses a shot, but getting the rebound is Olivia Rudolph. They get it into Are they Mar gonna call a foul on Jane Kimmel for that? So Jane Kimmel will wow. pick up her third foul. Marley Myers will go to the line. I may be biased, but I didn't think that she fouled on that. I think that Marley kind of reached over Jane Kimmel's back when she went to get the, for the ball. I guess the ref saw otherwise. Marley Myers at the line for free throw is good. To cut it to a four point game, 24.3 seconds to go in the third period. Avery Howard's gonna come in. I think she came in for Jane Kimmel. Jane Kimmel goes out. Second free throw by Marley Myers is up and good. Lady Mustangs get it into Elise Howard. Lena Hodo is going to put up a three from outside. Rebound is going to be claimed by Leak, but oh. stolen back by the Mustangs, stolen back by Leak. Quickly down, Sarah Prince is bringing it, kicks it over to Marley Myers. Whoa, wow. That scores the basket to make it a one point deficit. That's going to make it 49 to 40. Well, Avery made it after the buzzer went off. They're going to say no good. They're going it to go, was not good whatsoever. They're going to go look at it. It wasn't good. No way she made that run. Bill, we've, we've seen some great shots as the uh, quarters have run out. Lee hitting two three-pointers at the buzzer, and Avery almost hitting a dramatic three-pointer there, but it was a little too late there. In that quarter, uh, we outscored them. It was 14 to 14 that quarter. But uh, Katie Jones with 10 of uh, their uh, 14 points, and Myers came off the bench with their other four points on two free throws and a basket. If you, uh, Katie Jones leading the way for Leak with 22 points. If you had told me through three quarters Katie Jones had 22 points and Avery Howard had four, I would have thought we'd be behind, but luckily we're ahead. The Howard sisters got to get it going fourth quarter. They got four points each, struggling from the field, but you know those Howards, they're going to come back and battle. Elena Hodo leading the way with a spectacular game with 17 points. We're not sure how many fouls. <laughs> she stayed in, so I, I assume she has three. I'm not quite sure yet. Millie Moses with eight early on. How about Jane Kimmel Buford off the bench with seven key points off the bench, and Addison Weems with three. Lola Harris had five points that quarter, and uh, like I said, the, Avery, the Howard sisters with four points each. They're both coming up to start that fourth quarter. Big, big expectations from both of them. We're up by one. Lady Mustangs is stretched it out to an eight-point lead, and I don't think scored but one point late there. Leak 
tighten it back down to a one point. It's been a one point game by the Lady Mustangs at the end of the first period, second period, and third period. Leak will start the fourth period with the ball. Suddenly it has become a very, very interesting ball game going into the fourth quarter. Lady Mustangs come back with their starting five. Ball is stolen by Elise Howard. Out top driving with it. Elise going to stop, put up the shot, no good. Elena Hodo gets a rebound, puts the shot up, going to draw the foul. I think Avery might have gotten hit in the stomach trying to get that ball. I think number 44 might have elbowed her. I'm not sure who put that. they put that foul on. I didn't see. They don't put it on the scoreboard anymore. I want to think it was three, Olivia Rudolph down there, but I'm not positive of that. Avery made sure to tell the refs to watch for the elbows after she just got elbowed in the stomach. Timeout taken by Coach Carpenter. Avery, I think Coach Carpenter may have taken that time out to give Avery a breather. So, I am not sure who they put that foul on. Well, if they would put it on the scoreboard, we would know, but. Hopefully they fix that before next game. Do so. I'll be lost to giving you the rest of the way. Well, I guess we'll know if somebody fouls out <laughs> if they start. Lady Mustangs ha- have one free throw to come, leading at two points at 50 to 48, 744 to play in this contest. One free throw still to come for Elena Hodo. Got a timeout taken by the official again. Somebody lost the phone, a brief cell phone with some money in it. They had it at the concession stand. That's what they interrupted. <laughs> Took a timeout to announce a lost cell phone. <laughs> Has money in it in the concession stand, so come quickly to claim it. 7.44 to play. Lana Nahodo hits the second free throw to give the Lady Mustangs a three-point lead, 51-48. to 48. Bringing it up will be Caroline Cheatham. Get it outside. Avery Howard has got the defense on Katie Jones this time down. Long three-point basket taken by Gina. Rebound by Avery Howard. Good Quickly the down floor. to Lola Harris. Lola lays oh. it up, misses a basket. Millie Moses goes up and gets it. Going to be tied up by Jenna Allen. Possession yep. error will be to the Lady Mustangs. If only we could finish. Lola Harris is going to inbound it. Long back. Avery Howard's going to go get it back court. She gets it across court to Elise. Lady Mustangs had all four girls under the basket at one time. Then they break it out, trying to get it in. Lola Harris is in the corner, trap, gets it out to Elise Howard, takes it down the lane, stops, puts up a jumper, no good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Katie Jones. Leak comes out, Sarah Prince handling it to Leak. Kick it in the corner to Jenna Allen, does not take a shot. Olivia Rudolph fakes one, kicks it back out to Caroline Cheatham. Katie Jones has it out high. She's going to take it and drive down. Oh. Going to be yeah, an charge. offensive foul called on Katie Jones. Oh, it looked like she got hit in the face. Coach Hatch is up questioning the call. The official tells her the girl was set. She ran into her. Leak's going to pick up full court man-to-man. Nobody picked up Millie Moses. Lady Mustangs get it to her, back to Elise Howard. Avery's working to try to get loads and block screens for Elena Hodo to come out. Yeah, that's a foul. She's going to be fouled on the reach in by Olivia Rudolph. I think that's going to be what, her fourth? Fourth foul that I have on her. Third foul on Leak in this period. Lady Mustangs get it into Millie Moses. She takes an extra step. step with it. 
think she was indecisive whether to dribble it or pass it in the moment, and she ultimately walked. 6-19 to play in the contest. Lady Mustangs lead it by 3-51 to 48. Leak has possession of the ball. A screen to get Katie Jones loose inside. She fakes a shot, puts it up, rolls around the rim, goes in, scores to make it a one-point game. She once again was able to get down low, and we were behind her again. Lena Hodo tries to feed it down low to Lola Harris. It's going to be tapped over the inline by Sarah Prince. The Lady Mustangs ball. Lola Harris will inbound it for the Lady Mustangs. Lola inbounds it to Avery. Shoots a shot from the free throw line. No good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Katie Jones. Katie Jones has it out high, gets it back to Sarah Prince. Coach Hatch tells her the offense she wants to run. Long three-point basket taken on the outside, gonna be tapped back in by Leak, but claimed by Millie Moses. Millie takes it over half court, stops, gives it back to Lee Howard to set up the offense for the Lady Mustangs. Lee's down to Avery on the side. Trying to find Lola underneath, quick kicks it across court to Lena Hodo. Lena finds to Lee's down the lane, puts up a shot, no good. Rebounds claimed by Katie Jones. Kick it down, Jenna Allen's going to travel with it. She thought about the three, then she saw the opening to the goal, took an extra step. We're going to have a substitution. Looks like Ice is going to come in for Lola, and Izzy's going to come in for Millie. Coming back in will be Caroline Cheatham. Going out, I believe, will be Anna Morgan. No, Anna Morgan Young remains in the game. Jane Kimmel Buford's going to replace Elena Hodo. <laughs> Lady Mustangs get it into Lise Howard. She brings it up to court. Izzy Hodges brings it to the left side, swings it back around to Elise. 4.43 to play in the contest. Lady Mustangs lead it 51 to 50. Jane Kimmel Buford went up for a rebound, got knocked down. Izzy Hodges got it back out to Avery, misses a three. Rebound is claimed by Anna Morgan Young. We probably should have set up a play. Elise is going to get a foul as she went for it. Be Elise Howard's second foul. I think Elise just asked for a sub, if I'm not mistaken. She did. Looks like Elena's going to come in for her. They have given Elise a lot of trouble coming up to court. They've guarded her hard coming up. So coming out will be Caroline Cheatham. Going back in will be Jenna Allen. Caroline Cheatham had had the defense on Elise. Going to have a three-point shot taken by Prince. Going to be t- stepped on the end line with number three, Olivia Lidoff, as she was trying to go get it. She honestly probably should have let it go because I think it was took by Avery. We are very fortunate that uh, she jumped over the end line trying to save the ball. Caroline Cheatham is going to come back in and replace Jenna Allen. Lady Mustangs get it in to Avery Howard, back to Izzy Hodges. Izzy brings it up. Screen set by Avery to free her over Good half pass. court. Find down to Jane Kimmel Buford. Her shot's blocked by Katie Jones. Lee gets a ball. Lady Mustangs lead it 51 to 50 with 350 to play in this contest. Jane Kimmel's got to get around her. Lena Hodo drops back. Katie Jones is telling girl where she wants her to pass the ball. Lady Mustangs have it cut off from her. Jane Kimmel's still behind her. They get it to Katie yeah, Jane. See. Kimmel's going to get a reach over. That would be her fourth foul. If she would have gone sooner in front of her, she wouldn't have picked up the foul and risked trying to reach in and get it. Second foul on the Lady Mustangs in the fourth period. 3.34 to go, 51-50. Lady Mustangs lead it. Leak has the ball. Elise Howard, Millie Moses, Lola Harris are going to enter back in the game for the Mustangs.
Leak inbounds it under their own goal. Swings it back out to Olivia Rudolph. They get it to Katie Jones in the lane. Puts a shot, misses. Low Good line. Pass. I mean, Avery Howard with a rebound. Kicks Ooh. it out to Elise. Elise very- puts up a three. Rebound's going to go long. Going to be claimed by Katie Jones. Katie's looking to pass it. Mustangs cut off the passing lanes. Elise. Kick ball by Avery. Avery, Avery Howard is going to have a kick ball that goes over the sideline. Three eleven to play. 51-50. to 50. I think it's, we scored uh, – each team scored two points this quarter. Yes. Long pass in to Katie Jones. She kicks it back out high to Olivia Rudolph, takes it down, puts up the shot, scores the basket. What? Lola yeah. Harris, I believe, is going to get the foul. No, no, they called a charge. Did they not? Yes. They called a charge. They called a charge on her, uh, number three. That's her fifth, would not it? Her fifth, yeah. Well, I mean, when she went up for that shot, it looked like uh, Lola had gotten. Well. We're going to wait and see what it is. Did they call it a charge? Or did they call it a count basket? They're yeah, going, they're, they're going to call the charge. What I was going to say is Lola had gotten set when she went up for that shot, and they called the foul on her. <laughs> That's the fifth foul on Olivia Rudolph. The, le- the reason why I'm laughing is the leak crowd is chanting take his whistle <laughs> talking about the ref. So coming in to replace her will be Jenna Allen. Lady Mustangs are going to have the ball still leading by one point 51 to 50. Three minutes to play in this contest. Lisa Howard takes it down the lane. Good decision. Backs it back out as Katie Jones was standing there to wait to block the shot as she did. Lady Mustang swing it back around. Elise Howard passes it to Lena Hodo, puts up a three from out front. Gonna be no good. Go over the end line. It'll be Leak's ball with 241 to play. That did not come off her hand right when she shot it. May have tried to rush that shot. Inbounding it for Leak will be Jenna Allen. Lady Mustangs remain in the man to man on the inbound. Jenna Allen gets it in, gets it back, brings it up to court. Moves it over to Sarah Prince. Resets her offense. They get it into Katie Jones. Fakes left, fakes right, puts up a shot, misses it. Nobody blocked out. Rebound was claimed by Leak. Back out to Katie Jones. She's going to drive, kick it back out. Anna Morgan Young holds it, moves it back out to Caroline Cheatham. Ball's tapped by Lee. Caroline Cheatham goes back and gets it back. Screen set by Katie Jones. Katie Jones back to Caroline Cheatham. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Three-pointer taking Leak from the corner. Rebound's going to be battled for eventually claimed by Avery. Very surprised they did not call it over the back. Avery throws a long pass down the court to Lena Hodo. Her back was turned. It'll go over the end line. That was not a smart pass. Nobody was looking when she threw the ball. Leak will have the ball, 148 to go. Again, both teams have only scored two points in this period. Jenna Allen's going to bring it up for Leak. 140 to play in the contest. Katie Jones gets a loose under the goal, kicks it back out. Three-point shot taken by Leak. Number five, Anna Morgan Young, to give Leak a two-point lead at 53-51. Eighth lead change in this game. Elena Hodo lost it, can't dribble. Somebody's going to have to go get it from her. Back to Avery Howard. She finds Elise on the back door cut. Elise scores the basket to tie it up 53-53 with one minute to play. (laughs) 
timeout taken by Leap. 55.6 seconds to play in the contest. The ball game's tied up at 53-53. Bill, before that basket, Pill Academy in the fourth quarter was 0 of 8 from the field. And before that Elise Howard basket, uh, well, now with that Elise Howard basket, the Howard sisters combined were 4 of 20. If you had told me that Katie Jones had 24 points and the Howard sisters had four points each, and we were 0 of 8 from the uh, field until that uh, basket, you would have never guessed we'd have a tie ball game. Statistically, you would say that's impossible. Hasn't been the, and the Howards are phenomenal players. It hasn't been their game. 55 seconds left. I expect one of them to be Superman and go ahead and carry us to victory. But we were 0 of 8 until that Elise Howard basket in the fourth quarter. A couple uh, free throws by Lena Hodo were our scoring in that uh, quarter. Hodo leading the way with 19 points. It's time for the Howard sisters to stand up and take us to victory. 55.6 seconds to go. Leak will have the ball on the inline, the inbound. Timeout was taken by Leak's coach. There's the Lady Mustangs had, had made her turnover. I think the girl on the inline will have to be set. Possession error, I am not sure where it belongs. It would, Sheresh tells me it would be the Lady Mustangs ball on the tie ball. One official says she can run. One official says she's set. I don't think she can run. Well, she did. The one on the end line that gave her the ball told her that she could run the baseline. That was a, on a turnover. It was not on a basket. Or at least did score on that. That, that was a correct call. She could have run the line. It's Kane here. Two girls go to the floor. Nothing's called. Lee's got it, bringing it up with 49 seconds to go. Bringing it up is Jenna Allen. 40 seconds to go in the contest. Ball game's tied at 53-53. Katie Jones is out high setting screens. Good job by Lola to get over the screens. The, ooh. Katie Jones has got it out high. Going to hold it. Leak's going to go for the last shot. It looks like 24 seconds to play in this contest. Lena Hodo goes for the steal, taps it, but Jenna Allen's going to claim it on the backside. 15 seconds to go. They kick it over to Sarah Prince. She backs it out to midcourt. 10 seconds to go. They're trying to get it into Katie Jones. Timeout. Timeout is taken by Leak with 4.2 seconds to go. Four point two seconds to go. Ball game tied up two two. Forty two. I mean fifty three fifty three. Four point two seconds to go. Timeout. Full timeout taken by Leak. Leak will have it underneath their own goal. Talk about a nail biter. I can't tell you how fast my heart is beating right now. <laughs> Lady Mustangs will have a. Inbound pass to guard. It's right underneath Leak's goal on the opposite side from us in the bench. Next, you will have the Pillow Boys playing Simpson Boys in the next game tonight. Again, soccer will be at home Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the playoffs. Who'd you tell me they play? Play Heritage. 3 o'clock. On the campus of Pillow Academy, need your support out for the soccer boys. Katie Jones is going to inbound it for Leak. Here we go. Leak's going to set up in the stack. Katie Jones kicks it out, driving. Going to be foul on the play. 1.5 seconds to go. Leak will go to the free throw line. Do they not? Avery's going to be called for the foul. Was she in the shooting motion? I believe that's what they're going to call it. Or was it on the floor? I thought it was on the floor, to be honest with you, because Avery had held her whole arm. I don't know if they can review that or not. They're, They're going to give her two shots. Go. 
going to the line will be Anna Morgan Young. 1.5 seconds to go in this contest. First free throw is good. Leak is going to back everybody off the line. Coach Hatch is telling them to make sure they do not foul. Second free throw is good. Lady Mustangs are going to take a timeout. One point five seconds to play. League leads this fifty-five fifty-three. Lady Mustangs have taken a timeout, go inbound it. The loser of this game will be done for the season. So Lady Mustangs must score a basket to tie it up or take the lead or their season will be over. If they score a three point basket, it would be over for Leek. A nail biter here on the campus of Bio Academy. Sure is. Lola Harris is going inbound it for the Lady Mustangs. Leak is going to pick up some token pressure. Avery's going to shoot it for half court. It's going to be no good, and Leak is going to win the game 55 53 and end the Lady Mustangs season. I cannot tell you how bad I'm having PTSD right now from this. Fine season for the Lady Mustangs comes to an end tonight on the campus of Bio Academy with a 55 to 53 loss to Leak. The big star for Leak tonight was definitely Katie Jones. Lady Mustangs scoring defense was offense was, I believe, led by Lena Hodo. But Leak will move on to meet the winner of East Rankin and Heritage. It was a good game by Leak. Hate to see the season end for us. Yep. Lady Mustangs season comes to an end. We're having a prayer in the middle of the court. The boys of Pillow will take on Simpson next. So Hard fall game. Leak comes out on the top end of it. Tough night for the Lady Mustangs. Great game by both teams. And also, going to boys again. We'll come out and play Simpson in a minute. We're going to take a little break and be back and bring you some stuff before the start of the boys game. So, time out from Bio Academy. For our customers and our communities, your bank, your plus. Bank Plus. With McAllister's Choose Two, you bring great food together. You can put any half sandwich, half spud, half salad, or cup of soup with half of any other entree. McAllister's Deli. Great food brings us together. Local is Bank Plus. We're here, here, and here. And we're with you here, here, and here. Wherever, whenever you need us. We make our banking decisions right here because local means more than a location. It means a commitment to deliver more for our customers and our communities. Your bank, your plus, Bank Plus. With McAllister's Choose Two, you bring great food together. You can put any half sandwich, half spud, half salad, or cup of soup with half of any other entree. McAllister's Deli. Great food brings us together.
How local is Bank Plus? We're here, here, and here. And we're with you here, here, and here. Wherever, whenever you need us. We make our banking decisions right here because local means more than a location. It means a commitment to deliver more for our customers and our communities. Your bank, your plus, Bank Plus. With McAllister's Choose Two, you bring great food together. You can put any half sandwich, half spud, half salad, or cup of soup with half of any other entree. McAllister's Deli. Great food brings us together. How local is Bank Plus? We're here, here, and here. And we're with you here, here, and here. Wherever, whenever you need us. We make our banking decisions right here because local means more than a location. It means a commitment to deliver more for our customers and our communities. Your bank, your plus, Bank Plus. With McAllister's Choose Two, you bring great food together. You can put any half sandwich, half spud, half salad, or cup of soup with half of any other entree. McAllister's Deli. Great food brings us together. How local is Bank Plus? We're here, here, and here. And we're with you here, here, and here. Wherever, whenever you need us. We make our banking decisions right here because local means more than a location. It means a commitment to deliver more for our customers and our communities. Your bank, your plus, Bank Plus. With McAllister's Choose Two, you bring great food together. You can put any half sandwich, half spud, half salad, or cup of soup with half of any other entree. McAllister's Deli. Great food brings us together. All right, good evening. Welcome back to the campus of Bio Academy, getting ready for the boys' action. Start of the boys' tournament started earlier today as Leak beat Bio in a double overtime game by three points. The bracket sets up for this side of the boys' tournament. Heritage is the number one seed out of our conference. Play Wayne, the number four out of the Central Conference. It Wednesday at 515. Leak, as I said, beat Bio earlier at four o'clock in a double overtime game. Simpson, the number one seed out of the Central Districts, playing Pilla, the number four seed now. Rossville, the number two out of the North District, will play Lamar at 745 tomorrow night here. That's the two and three game tomorrow night. So the Mustangs are getting ready to take on Simpson. We faced Simpson twice earlier this year. Uh, played, hung with them both games. Sure uh, did. Simpson had had a young man that just got totally on fire, Colin Jenkins, in the first game on the campus of Pillar. They basically shot us out of our own gym that night. 
uh, contested shots in his face oh, yeah. and all. He made never seen anything. anything. Like that. He did not have as big a night the second trip when we went down there, but Chance Funches had come back and had a big game for them down there. But the Mustangs took it down to the wire. Sure did down there. That's the night we had the the towel dance, the shoe <laughs> dance, the mop dance, and everything else on the court. Uh, trying to figure out a wet spot on the court. So we're getting ready to start here in about three minutes. I'd like to remind you that the Pillar Ag auction is Thursday night. 5.30 social starts. 6.15 auction starts. 7 o'clock dinner will be served. Got some great items there. It's not only ag, there are a lot of other items. There's a uh, quail hunt uh, at Trout Valley Quail. Uh, that's been donated by Green Agriculture Services, Lauren Green. We again have a gas uh, six burner range from Viking donated. We have a uh, 15 wide nugget ice machine from Viking donated, big item. All your basketballs, baseballs signed by the players will be there. We'll have a lot of guns in it. We have four infield baseball tickets to an Ole Miss game of your choice. Mm. Um, from Clint Dunn, you contact him. Four chatback tickets to Mississippi State versus Texas A&M in a parking pass donated by Regions Bank. That's next October. A youth duck hunt donated by Wilson Britt. Uh, we have three nights, two-day inshore fishing down at Bay St. Louis by Justin Jeffcoat. Uh, have a duck hunt for four at Mallard Rest in Webb. It includes lodging meals, guide, afternoon arrival on December 11th and dinner. Morning, full breakfast after hunt. Ammo is included for the hunt. Uh, have a dove hunt for two on Labor Day weekend, Saturday or Sunday at Coal Plantation in Isola. Uh, donated by AgriWorld Farm Investments. Uh, have two four seats, courtside, basketball tickets to Ole Miss versus South Carolina in Oxford. Club level food, drink and amenities, February 24th, donated by Clint Dunn. It's a good game right there. Big game be on the campus. So a lot of things other than just ag. Reminder, boys soccer playoff against Heritage, 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon on the campus of Pillow Academy. Uh, soccer boys need your support uh, is, is you, uh, they go into playoffs uh, on the home campus against Heritage. So we need all the support out we can get for the soccer team. We're going to get our starting lineups here. Number two, Charlie Price. Number five, Cameron Lee. Number 12, Jerry Gilbert. Number 22, Aiden Delonte. Number 33, Grace Stone. And now for your home team, Simpson Academy. Number five, Gabe Smith. Number 10, Kyle Jenkins. Number 14, Chance Funches. Number 15, Bryce Williams. And number 21, Benjamin Kennedy. There you have your starting lineup. The Mustangs are going to be the visitors on the scoreboard here, being that they are the Number four seed, playing the one seed. They'll start Charlie Robbins, number two, a senior. Number five, Cameron Lee, a senior. Number 12, Jeremy Gilbert, a ninth grader. 22, Aiden Valente, a tenth grader. 32, Grayson Jones, a senior. Missing the, the action of Preston Blaylock, the senior, who broke a wrist back earlier in the season. Simpson will start five, Gage Smith, 11th grader. 10, Colin Jenkins, a 12th grader. 14, Chance Funches, 11th grader. 15, Bryce Williams, 11th grader, and 21, Benjamin Kitten, 11th grader. Tip's going to be controlled by Simpson. Three-pointers taken in the corner quickly by Bryce Williams. Hits the first one to give Simpson a uh, three, three lead. I look at the scoreboard. It was going up and down, but uh, I didn't know whether they were backing that down to a two or not, but it was a three-point basket. Mustangs get it into Grayson Jones, kicks it across to Cam Lee, puts up a three-pointer from the right side, no good. Rebound. J.J. Gilbert, big rebound on the backside. As Mr. Benusu had said, a big rebound by J.J. Gilbert to get, and go back up and score the two-point basket. 
Well, it's rare that we get to play uh, someone on the other side of the conference twice in a season as another three. Another three, this Rains time in. by Benjamin Kennedy from the top of the key. Simpson's going to pick up in a, looks like a 2-2-1 two -two full-court trap. Mustangs try to get it to Charlie Ribbons in the center, stolen by Simpson. Another three-pointer on the way from Simpson, no good. Long rebound is going to be claimed by Chance. Funches puts up a two, no good. Rebound by Charlie Robbins. Aiden Valente down low, takes it up, puts it up, shoots it over to goal. Rebound is going to be claimed by Collins Jenkins. Out to Chance Funches bringing it up. Kicks it back over to Colin Jenkins to put up a three from outside. Off the front of the rim, no good. Give it back and go to number five, Gage Smith. Looks like they're going to... Is that on... It's not confusing. They're going to call it on the floor, looks like. Yeah, but I could never get to number, I, the, what, whether it was J.J. or? It's Grayson. They put up Grayson uh, on the okay. scoreboard for his first. I'm not sitting at an angle that I can see the official's hands pointing at the scoreboard, but the scoreboard is back working this game. Give us the fouls. Funchez kicks it over in the corner. Three-pointer taken from the corner by Gage Smith to score his second three of the contest. Mustangs get it into J.J. He loses it. Must oh. Cam Lee passes it to Aiden Valente, who was running up the court, didn't realize it, picked up by Simpson. Another three-pointer on the way from Gage Smith. Will make it 12-2. to two. Timeout taken by the Mustangs. The barrage of threes here early. Four three-point baskets made. By Simpson, quickly in this contest, 5.52 to go. Against a uh, Mustang team that's um, probably like a lot of this crowd, a little shell-shocked as we just saw the uh, Lady Mustangs team uh, uh, losing the first round to end their season. To, uh, to play a uh, game just five minutes after that, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's tough for anybody. Yep, heartbreaker for the Lady Mustangs. Their third loss of the season comes in the first round of the North half. Mustang men have fallen 12 to two with a minute and eight seconds to go. Official stop, make some of the students that are sitting on the stage, make sure the feet are not hanging down over the edge. Mustangs get it in against the press. Aiden Valente kicks it over to JJ. Mustangs are trying to get it up the court. Ball is gonna be stolen by Funches, lays it up, misses it. Rebound by Cam Lee. Loses the dribble. Aiden Valente comes, picks it up, gives it back to Cam Lee. Get it to Aiden at the free throw line. Pass is going to be tipped out of bounds by Gage Smith. This thing's going to make these possessions count. Don't force anything. Don't try to get it back all at once here. Inbounds pass is stolen by Bryce Williams. Stop puts up a three. Makes it good. Fifth three of the game for Simpson. All Mustang, points off the three. All five three-pointers by Simpson with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. In the first period, Mustangs Jack Kirk has entered the game. Place Aiden Valente. Grayson Jones gets it in the low block. He's going to be pass it to Charlie Robbins, but a foul is going to be called on the floor. Be on number 14, Chance Funches. 5.03 to play in the contest. First period. Ball's inbounded by the Mustangs. We're going to be tapped back over the sideline, inline by Simpson. Cam Lee gets cut off. J.J. is going to take a three from outside. Long rebound is going to come back out to J.J. Kicks it over to Cam Lee. Drives it down. Puts up a two-point shot. No good. J.J. battles for the rebound. Going to tip it out to Grayson Jones. 
Ball's going to be tapped underneath, claimed by Simpson. Out running with it is Colin Jenkins. Kick it over in the corner. Simpson puts up a two-point shot. Gage Smith drove and missed it. Ball's going to go in the lane and be off of Jack Kirk. Be Simpson's ball underneath the goal. Inbounding at Simpson will be Gage Smith in the trunks. Funches drives down the lane, puts up the shot, and scores the basket. Make it 17 to 2. Grayson Jones passes tip, going to be stolen by Simpson. Back down to Gage Smith. Going to have a foul. Foul will be on J.J. Gilbert, his first of the game. Funchez gets it back behind the three-point line, steps back, takes a three, nails it. I mean. That's the sixth three of the game for Simpson. In the first four minutes of this game, Simpson has hit six three-pointers. Mustangs get it down the court to Grayson Jones, over to Jack Kirk. Can't get the shot up, brings it back out, kicks it to Cam Lee. Cam over to Charlie Robbins, going to put up a three from outside, no good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Benjamin Kennedy. Quickly down, Simpson gets it back down the court, pulls it up, sets up their offense. Three-pointer again taken by Simpson, no good. This time rebound by Cam Lee as Gage Smith could not connect on that three-pointer. Grayson Jones in the lane, shots partially blocked there by Benjamin Kennedy. Simpson out running with it, kicks it over to Chance Funchez, fakes a three, drives in, puts up the two to make it 22 to 20. 2.59 to play, lady. I mean, Mustangs get it in against the press. Long pass up the court to Jack Kirk. Back over to Charlie Robbins. Gets it over midcourt. Charlie Robbins' pass is going to go long. Going to be picked up by Gage Smith. Take it down and lay it up and score the basket. Going to be a timeout taken by the Mustangs as Simpson leads it 24-2 with 2.39 to play in the first period. Not a great start. Simpson has come out on fire in the three-point range. Bill, 24-2 domination by Simpson. Simpson is 9 of 15 from the field, including 5 of 8. 6, on, six of 10 from three-point country. Put in perspective, they've taken 15 shots, and they have made nine, including six three-pointers. We are 1 of 6. We've only taken six shots this contest. Uh, getting out shot 15 to 6, it's going to be tough for us to take a lead, but that, they're just hot from all cylinders and uh, early domination by the Simpson Academy squad. They are. Their they're, uh, press defense and Mustangs are struggling to get it up to court against it. It's a 2 2 1 press that they're running. Giving us fits. Mustangs will have it. Cam Lee will inbound it for the Mustangs. Simpson's going to set up in the 2-2-1 press. Enter the game for the Mustangs is Jack McClellan. The Mustangs get it into J.J. Gilbert. He's double team over to Charlie Robbins. Charlie gets it over to Grayson Jones. Grayson's pass intended for Jack McClellan is stolen by Chance Funchez. He brings it back, puts up a three from out front, no good. Rebounds battle for claimed by Jack McClellan out to Charlie Robbins, quickly down to Grayson Jones. Grayson's going to take it down, try to reverse it. Hits the underside of the goal as he tried to reverse sides. Comes down and goes off for Grayson out of bounds. We broke the press there, Mr. Benu. Well, that but, we did, but, but Grayson got cut off, tried to take it to the reverse side, just didn't quite get far enough. Good hustling play by Grayson. Just couldn't convert on it. Another three-pointer on the outside from Gage Smith. Good for Simpson to make it a 27-2 lead. Two minutes to go in the first period. Mustangs trying to break the press. Charlie Robbins gets it over midcourt. Gets it back to J.J. J.J. takes it down. Going to be blocked by Funchez. Claimed by Benjamin Kennedy. Simpson gets it over midcourt. Taking it down the lane and laying it up and scoring it is Toby Smith who entered the game for 
Simpson, a ninth grader. Cam Lee gets down the court, puts up a shot, going to score the basket. There you go. 29 to 4. Walking it back up slowly this time is Chance Funches. Gage Smith fakes right, takes it down, lays it, and scores it. Going to be. Going to be charge on, on Gage Smith. He his first foul, second foul of the game on Simpson. Mustangs have two fouls. Simpson has two fouls. Mustangs lining up like we're shooting free throws. Didn't realize that was the charge called. It's Cam Lee got the brunt of that one. Got ran over. I think Gage Smith is going to go out of the game after that as he hit the floor hard. Entered the game for them is Denver Carter, a 10th grader. Mustangs get it over to Charlie Robbins. Charlie's driving. Step back jumper. It's going to be no good. Rebound was going to be claimed by Jack McClellan, but he pushed to get it. Be the third foul on the Mustangs. First foul on Jack McClellan. 102 to play in the first period. Simpson leads it 29 to 4. Another three-pointer taken by Simpson. Rebounds claimed by J.J. as Colin Jenkins couldn't connect on that. J.J. puts it up, scores the basket, and going to be fouled. Foul is going to be on Benjamin Kennedy, his first. Third foul on Simpson in this first period. 47.8 seconds to play. Free throw no good. Going to be tapped over the end line by the Mustangs. Mustangs possession's being very limited by this defense and turnovers. And uh, when we get the shot off, uh, not there on the rebound. Simpson dominating the glass. Turn around jumper quickly put up by Colin Jenkins. No good. Shot was rebound with claim put back up by Simpson. Rebound by the Mustangs. J.J. Gilbert running with it. Puts up a shot. Scores the lean-in basket. 15 seconds to play. 29 to 8. On a little run here to end this first quarter. 6-0 run at the end of this first quarter for the Mustangs. Chance Funches is going to put up a three off the front of the rim to end the period. No good. So Simpson's going to lead it 29 to 8 at the end of the first period. Simpson red hot shooting from three point land in that first period. Bill, I think it was 27 to 2, so we actually ended on a 6 uh, 2 run to end what was otherwise a pretty tough uh, first quarter. Uh, we shot 4 of 10 from the field, only got 10 shots off. Uh, JJ with six points leading the way. Cam Lee with two. And, uh, oh, goodness gracious, who else scored? Uh, that was it. We got eight points. You oh, we got eight points. Two. Yeah, yeah. And we, yep, you're right. We got eight points, four of ten from the field, no free throws. Uh, Simpson, they cooled off. They missed their last four shots. They were 10 of 21 from the field, seven of 13 from three-point country, just on fire with their 20, 21 points, just uh, – Lighting up. Look, real quickly at halftime, I'm going to be joined by both Headmaster Barrett Donahoe as well as uh, Floyd Melton. Floyd Melton's got a few things to say, too, so we'll be joined at halftime by those two. Oh, great to hear. Yep. We'll have a halftime interview of the boys' game there. Again, Simpson Pillow is going to play tonight for the winner to face the winner of Rossville Lamar tomorrow night, Friday at 630. Again, if most of you I know we're probably tuned in in the girls' game. Girls lost a heartbreaker to a leak by two to end their season. Yeah, win today guarantees playing next week. It's just seeding after that, but got to win today. Charlie Robbins is going to be fouled out high by Collins Jenkins on a reach in. Charlie Robbins will inbound it. J.J., Jack McClellan, Cam Lee, and Grayson Jones in for the Mustangs. Charlie Robbins gets it over to J.J., drives it down the lane, misses a shot, and rebound's going to be claimed by Colin Jenkins. Out running when it kicks it over in the corner. Another three-pointer on the way from Bryce Williams. No good rebound by Grayson Jones. Got to take advantage of this cold spell. Had a run to end that first quarter. 
Cam Lee puts up a two, no good. Charlie Robbins with a rebound, puts it back up and scores the basket. 29-10, to 7-15 to play. This Mustang team quite a few times this year got down big in some games but battled yep. back. There's never been any quit in them. No, uh, they're, they're going to make a play four quarters no matter what. Another three-pointer on the way from Chance Funches scores it. Cam Lee gets it into Charlie Robbins against the 2-2-1. Mustang get it over to J.J. back to Cam Lee, driving it up the middle. Long pass down the court's going to be too hard. Go over Grayson Jones' head. Be a turnover by the Mustangs. Nice pass Simpson well. gets a backdoor cut to Collins Jenkins, scores it, makes a basket. Mustangs get it in quickly for the trap and be set up. J.J. How in the world? Goes to the floor on his knees, keeps dribbling, comes up with it, gets it over to Cam yeah, Lee, is. puts up a three, make it 34-13. to 13. Yeah, Cam kind of calibrates with his shot, but once he finds it, tends to uh, stay hot. Three-point basket again taken by... Simpson's number five, uh, Gage Smith answered it. Pass is stolen by Funches. Step back two, no good. Rebound by Charlie Robbins. J.J. takes it down the lane, lays it up, scores the basket as nobody cut him off to make it 37 to 15. 5.45 to play in the second period. Three-pointer this time by Gage Smith, no good. Grayson Jones with a rebound and a long pass too yeah. hard down the court. Not but taking advantage of these. They're, they're, uh, this quick pace actually plays into our hands. If, you know, if the, they go cold, we're getting these quick possessions, more opportunities for points. We're just not converting them. Timeout taken by Simpson. Mustangs have had two turnovers going down the court with long passes they couldn't control. to play in the second period. Mustangs trail it 37 to 15. Mustangs have scored seven points in this period. Leak has scored eight points in this period. Leak has been, I mean, excuse me, Simpson. I still got Leak on the brain from Mm -hmm. the girls game, but Simpson. I think a lot of us do. Have been on fire from three point land. Yeah, near a 50% clip. Might have dipped a little bit, but uh, even still, not afraid to take it. And uh, hard to start much better if you're Simpson. Um. Simpson had been on fire. Again, the Mustang soccer team will play at home 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon playoffs. That game had been moved up to accommodate the Pillar Booster Auction Thursday night out at the Wade Hangar at the Greenwood LaFour Airport. 5.30 social, 6.15 auction starts, 7 o'clock dinner will be served. Come out and support the Booster Club that night. A lot of great items in the auction. Another three-pointer on the way this time from Bryce Williams. Good to make it a 40-15 to 15 lead. Mustangs pass it across court to J.J., J.J.'s going to drive into the double team, gets it across midcourt. Back down in the corner, Charlie Robbins will put up a three. Rebound by Funches on the backside, out running with it. Loses the ball, slips, gets back up, gets his dribble. Grayson Jones has the defense on him. Kicks it back over to Bryce Williams. Drives it. Out high is Benjamin Kenny. Funches drives. Puts up the shot, no good. Gets his rebound, puts it back up. He's going to be fouled by Jack McClellan, I believe. Jack will pick up his second foul. It's great defense by Charlie Robbins in that initial drive. First foul in this second period on the Mustangs. Chance Funches will go to the line for two, miss the first one. Second free throw, no good. Rebound by Grayson Jones. Mm-hmm. 
Mustangs down in the corner. Going to have it tapped away. Be Mustangs ball as Funchez tapped it away. Over the inline. Cam Lee will inbound it for the Mustangs. Find Grayson Jones in the corner out quickly to Charlie Robbins. Puts up a three. No good. Long rebound comes to Cam Lee. Puts up a two. No good. J.J. battles for the rebound. Is tipped over and claimed by Benjamin Kennedy. Simpson gets it up court quick. Gage finds underneath going to be a foul on the floor on Cam Lee as Benjamin Kenny got found. Foul on the floor by Cam Lee. It'll be his first foul. Got to fake the three there and then went in low. Got to cut. Defense off guard. That's a push be off. Going to be a traveling. Travel. Okay. I think one official was going to call a charge, but the other official called a travel first. Cam Lee will inbound it for the Mustangs. Gets it to Grayson Jones in the center quickly over to J.J. J.J.'s taking it down, puts up the shot, no good. Jack McClellan's going to pick up a foul from behind. It'll be yep. Jack, Jack's third foul quickly in this game. Coming back in for him will be Aiden Valente. 352 to play in the second period. Simpson leads it 40 to 15. Another three-point shot taken by Gage Smith. No good. Rebound by Charlie Robbins. JJ's pass to Grayson Jones underneath. Gets cut off. Puts up a shot, no good. And Aiden Valente tips the rebound back up, but no good. Rebound's going to be claimed by Collins Jenkins. He gets it inside to Benjamin Kennedy. Works, turns around, puts up the two, no good. Rebound by Grayson Jones. Cam Lee takes it down, puts up a floater, no good. Going to battle for the rebound. The ball's going to be on the floor, eventually claimed by Chance Funchez. Three minutes to play in the second period. Simpson leads it 40 to 15. Three point shot outside from Simpson, no good. Rebound by Cam Lee. Again, a too long a pass down the court. Another turnover by the Mustangs trying to make a full court pass. Need every possession and then some right here and uh, to keep throwing it away. That will definitely not help the Mustangs get back in it. Simpson gets it down low. Pass was tipped. Still caught by Simpson. Put up on a three-point shot on the deflection was Toby Smith. Long pass to Aiden Valente down. Aiden Valente takes it. Puts up the shot. No good. Ball's going to be on the floor. Battle for Grayson Jones. Gets it back to J.J. J.J.'s going to be fouled going up on the shot. He will go to the line for two. What an effort by Grayson. That foul is going to be, be on 25. Will Carter, his first foul of the game. J.J. Gilbert will go to the line for two. First free throw is good. Mustang scored seven quick points to start this period, then went cold for a while. Come back and get two points there on a free throw. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the second period. Funchez is going to put up another three from outside. No good. Aiden Valente gets the rebound on the floor, loses it. Gage Smith saves it back to Toby Smith, lays it up for the two-point basket. Mustangs get it in quickly, stolen by Funchez on a pass down. Funchez takes it down, misses a shot, goes up and gets a rebound back. It's going to go off of Funchez, be the Mustangs ball going the other way. Mustangs get it into Cam Lee. J.J. kicks it around, back to Cam Lee. Grayson Jones over midcourt to Aiden Valente in the corner, launches a three from outside, no good. J.J. goes high to get the rebound, puts it up. They're going to be called for the foul, charging, I believe. Going to be an offensive foul on J.J. Gilbert, who will pick up his second foul. 
Fourth team foul for the Mustangs. Minute 32 to go in the half. Simpson does a good job driving and kicking it over to Will yep. Carter to score the two-point basket. Mustangs break the press up the center with Charlie Robbins. He's going to put up the shot. He's going to get the roll, score the basket. Make it a 47-19 game with 110 to play in the second period. Like to remind you, boys soccer will be at home Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the playoffs. Charlie Robbins is going to get a reachover foul from behind. Be the fifth foul on the Mustangs. First foul on Charlie Robbins in the game. Going to the line will be Collins Jenkins for two free throws. As that's the fifth foul on the Mustangs. Free throw by Collins Jenkins is good. Jack McClellan's going to come back in and replace Cam Lee. Got somebody at the line for Simpson, but he'll be for the shooter for Collins Jenkins. Free throw off the front of the rim, no good. Grayson Jones with a rebound. Find Aiden Fine. Valente loose underneath the goal. His shot's going to be blocked by Will Carter. Simpson running with it, stops at the three-point line, kicks it back to Funchess. 45 seconds to play in the second period. Another three-pointer launched by Simpson, rebound by Jack McClellan. Over to J.J. Gilbert, coming up to court, 35 seconds. J.J. is going to travel with the ball, be another turnover on the Mustangs. 34.6 seconds to play in the second period. Simpson leads it 48-19. to 19. A three-point shooting barrage by Simpson tonight. Absolutely, and just unable to uh, get anything really going consistently in the offensive end through uh, turnovers and really not a lot of second-chance opportunities. Going to be a backcourt as number 12, Denver Carter, lost the ball, goes back to pick it up. Charlie Robbins gets it over back court, drives it over. Ball's going to be tipped by Simpson's number three, Toby Smith. Why is it JJ to kind of box out a bit on that? Yep. Just let it go. Jack Kirk enters the game for Jack McClellan. Charlie Robbins gets it over midcourt. Find Grayson Jones underneath, back to Jack Kirk. Jack puts up a shot, no good. Rebound's gonna be claimed by Simpson. Quickly down, a long three-pointer <laughs> for halftime was taken by Brady McKinney, but hits the air condition vent and blocks the three-pointer. That may be the best defense we've had on a three-point <laughs> shot tonight was air condition vent. So Mustangs are going to trail it 48-19 to 19 at halftime. Bill, sure. the, I'm sorry, stats, yeah, Bill. Uh, Mustangs are 8 of 24 from the field, just struggling big time offensively against this tall Simpson team. Uh, uh, as I said, 8 of 24. The, uh, Simpson's taken 23 three-pointers, and we've taken 24 field goals, and they're 10 of 23 from uh, three-point land. They were 7 of 13. They kind of dried up that second quarter with uh, 3 of 10 from three-point land. But uh, – 48 to 19 to score, 29 point advantage for Simpson. Um, leading the way, JJ's having a big game with 10 points. Cam Lee with five points and Charlie with four points and that's your scoring for the Mustangs as I'm joined by Barrett Donahoe at the half. Mr. Donahoe, this has not been, what's going on? First of all, good to see you, babe. It's a great day to be a Mustang. We gotta, we gotta move Which over. Which way am I going? Going this way? People in the background. We gotta oh, go this, this way. way. I thought I was supposed here. to be going this way. That's I, what I, I apologize doing. about that. Don't want to have the bio fans over here on the broadcast here. <laughs> well, I don't know why. They, their, their student section really cheered for our, for our team. I said, they did. There's one thing that can bring two rival schools together, and that's Leak Academy. So, me, I mean, what, that, that's <laughs> the best thing about that's it. That's a great observation. Yeah. They really were trying to affect our uh, Leak Academy free throws in that second half and uh, almost worked out. Uh, first of all, this game, I'll tell you what, uh, Simpson's on fire from three-point land. They were they were ten, took 23 three-pointers, made 10 of them, and a uh, huge advantage. Any observations in this contest? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what you do about that. Wow. I mean, I, you know, you, you sit there and you talk about this, that, and the other and things that you can do. But 
the 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 shooting's been remarkable. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. I think they had, you know, I think they hit what like eight of their first nine. Or yes. something Like that. I mean, it was it was something just absurd that yeah. you don't ever see. It was so. Twenty-seven to two at one point. Yeah. So we've actually uh, we've actually been outscored nineteen to seventeen since that twenty-seven yeah, to I mean, uh, and, start. And I give credit to our guys on that. They're hustling. They're yeah. playing. They're fighting. I mean, you saw them fighting for a loose ball down there with twelve seconds left. I mean, so he's. Uh, you know, just go out there, compete as hard as you can in the second half, and yeah. uh, they had a good season. And hopefully, you know, ne you never know what's going to happen. But I mean, uh, it doesn't look good for us. Doesn't right look now, good for us. Yeah. yeah. Tough first game. Two of the best teams in the state of Mississippi. Two of the best programs in the state of Mississippi in girls basketball. Leak Academy pulls out a, a shocker, uh, defeating a spectacular Pill Academy team late in the contest by two free throws, winning the game two points. What an atmosphere we had in this gym. Yeah, it, from the very beginning, from the first game of the day, bleeding into the next game, it's been a tremendous atmosphere, and they've done a tremendous job of hosting um, yeah. so far and, and getting people seated. And I mean, it's been it's been really good. Yeah, uh, it was hard. One of those games is going to hard to swallow. It's yeah. going to be uh, tough for our coaches and our players for quite some time. I got to ask a question a few minutes ago by uh, one of the administrators from Simpson Academy. When was the last time? Pill Academy wasn't in the state championship tournament or state tournament, and I said, you know, I don't know, but when's the last time Leak wasn't because it was either going to be us or them. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and there's two programs that could easily continue to play and, and win games and get to overall and compete for overall. So a really tough draw early. Yeah. Um, one team was going home. Um, you know, just it didn't happen for us tonight. Yeah. I, but our girls are, have had a tremendous season. They have a lot to hold their head up about uh, because they – they were phenomenal throughout yeah. the whole season. I'll tell you, a really happy squad right now is that Rossville squad up there in Ooh, Collierville, Tennessee, yeah, not yeah. having to face these Mustangs yeah. after a 20-point loss to Pill. Of course, they beat us by 20, and we were kind of anticipating that would be a great matchup down the road. But uh, that's why they play the game, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, look, I'm, I'm hoping Bill comes up here because I want to say some things about Bill Long here before sure. he, he does. Let's talk about the fact that we'll be hosting the state tournament next year. We had it last yeah, year. And absolutely. Man, huge announcement, y'all. If you haven't noticed on the MAIS yeah. site, the state yeah. tournament is coming back to Greenwood. And most yeah. importantly, I get to sell hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> we try, yeah, let me tell you, it's it's awesome for us to be able to host again. And so when we put in, they do it in a two-year cycle. And and, um, and it would have been really kind of the traditional uh, the traditional idea would have been to put in for the regional because, which is the north, because we hosted the state tournament last year, right? But um, we didn't. I, I, I put in for the state hoping to get it one out of the two years with the renovated gym. Yeah. And um, I think we had a great experience hosting the state. I think a yeah. lot of people had a great experience in Greenwood last year. Um, you know, people don't realize this. It really is kind of a central location for, for so many teams that travel. So, um, you know, it, it was one of those things where I didn't know if we'd get it. Yeah. Uh, Kind of did a little push and hope to get it, and and we did, and so and and, it, and it's wonderful to be able to do that. So hopefully, Pilla and the gym that we have, the facilities that we have, will be on rotation for every two years, either a regional or a state tournament. It's fantastic. As we move forward, I can't assure that to anybody, but um, but I think that we have a facility that definitely um, is uh, second to none, and so that I hopefully we'll be able to do that. How often do you get a state tournament though? Every two years, I mean that's that very seldom happens. We yeah. got lucky on that. Yeah, one. we did, and so uh -huh. getting hosted again next year will be great, and 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 not just. The fact that we get toasted, but I think our people um, do such a tremendous job of hosting. Yeah, All the people that make that happen, and there's so many of them. Yep. And so, uh, yep. and, and and you being one of them is, yep. as uh, you know, with the rooms and, and hotels and just things to do. And what I okay. charge for the rooms? Let's 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 <laughs> let's emphasize that. Let's 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 go over that real quickly. Look, uh, just really quickly. Uh, so you so you emailed me this morning, we, and then we ended up calling on the phone. Uh, big announcement: we got a new offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah. I fired, I fired myself. Yeah. It was, I was going to say. Great. This is the second time you're like one and done at Pill Academy. On well, the I, wouldn't, I wouldn't quite say that. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, no, uh, that was something that was never going to be long term. We knew that going yeah. into it. Uh, that was something that happened because of a late departure from the coaching yeah. staff. But tell so, us. So, and, and uh, yeah, we've hired Chris Bunio. Uh He has been the head coach at Elkmont High School in Elkmont, uh, Alabama gotcha. uh, for the uh, last couple of years. And he has a history in the MAIS. He played football at Mississippi College after playing his high school football at John Carroll. Catholic school in Birmingham. He's from Birmingham. Um, and uh, he has a connection. Um, we, we do have a connection with, between him and Coach Crowder and uh, uh, the head coach of Jackson Prep and his brother and just, you know, through the through the coaching uh, circles have a connection. And so um, really uh, young, energetic, bright mind uh, for the offensive uh, side of the football. And we're excited 
to have him uh, That's great. joining That's us. Great. He's going to be on campus uh, Friday, and so That's we're great. excited. And he's going to be helping out with basketball, too. He is going to be helping out with boys basketball and Excellent. whatever capacity Coach Mitchell wants him to help. Um, and uh, he's he has experience coaching girls and boys basketball. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're excited just to have him there, and he'll be teaching as well. So Excellent. he'll be in the classroom. Um, just another addition to our, to our staff that we're excited about, and uh, hopefully uh, he'll bring a lot of energy and a lot of excitement to our That's guys. Great. Look, we got about a minute left. Hey, where's Bill? Uh, we wanted to honor Bill with something. We wanted to talk about this. Uh, Barry, I didn't get a good chance to tell you this, but uh, Bill Long has been has has been nominated and has won something called the Silver Beaver Award, which the Boy Scouts of America puts out every year. It's a huge honor for somebody who's very involved with scouts and at the same time uh, does a lot for the community. And when we nominated him, a number of people nominated him, a number of parents, a number of kids, my son, and a, a number of other uh, kids nominated him. It's somebody that gets really involved with the community and all that. This guy's been the former alumni uh, president for Mississippi yeah. State and that nationwide and all that. Heck, he's got you going to Mississippi State function, doesn't uh, he? Yes, he does, and we have floor seats, and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, but I told him I would not wear Ole Miss <laughs> gear during that. But congratulations to Bill for that. And I'm not going to call this game. I'm going to let Mr. Bernou do well, it. Yeah, please do. Because, please oh, here's Bill. There here's he Bill. There he is. Okay. There. Thank you, Suresh. Bill, we were honoring you, and you weren't around there talking about the Silver Beaver Award. And you were nowhere to be found. All right, getting ready to start the second half. Didn't hear any interview, but I, I know it was a good interview with everybody you had involved. Oops. Simpson's going to start the ball, start the second half with the ball. Three point, same way they started the game. Bryce Williams makes that one, make it 51 to 19. Charlie Robbins gets it in to Cam Lee. Step back two. Gets the bounce and scores the basket. Down low scoring the basket is Benjamin Kennedy. Apologize to you, I had to run back up here to get here for the second half. It got away from me at halftime, people talking. Grayson Jones misses it down low. You're a popular Boy. guy, Mr. Long. Going back the other way, Funchez kicks it in the corner. Three-point basket was faked by Collins Jenkins. Ball was tapped out for him, goes offside to goal. I thought Collins Jenkins stepped out of bounds with the ball in his hand. A lot of confusion here. Ref's going to huddle Well, if up. it hits the side of the backboard, it should be the Mustangs ball anyway. Ref saying hit the Not side of the backboard. Kimley. Winona, Don't, I mean. Go, uh, Kirk, at, when it Kirk, kept going yeah, off top of the yeah, yeah. backboard. Now. Grenada. Geez. Oh, yeah. there we go. Third time. Grenada. It is going to be the Mustangs ball. Correct call, I believe, was made. Simpson hit the side of the backboard, came back down on a Simpson player out of bounds, but the ref was calling it dead offside the backboard before it ever came down. First awarded to Simpson. Officials got together, corrected it. Mustangs get it in against the 2 2 1 press. Aiden Valente picked up the dribble, finds Grayson Jones midcourt. Charlie Robbins over midcourt. Charlie's driving down, puts up a shot, no good. Gets his rebound, puts it back up, no good. Gets his rebound, scores that one. There you go. Two offensive rebounds by Charlie Robbins there to make it a 30 point game at 53 to 23. 6.25 to play in the third period. Funchez drives, puts up a shot from the right, scores the basket. We're seeing a team collectively just so uh, so red hot. Their shooting percentage has been unbelievable. Charlie Robbins for a three from the corner, no good. Rebound's going to be claimed eventually by Colin Jenkins off of Aiden Valente's fingertips. Another three-pointer on the way outside this time from Bryce Williams. No good, but rebounds claimed by Simpson. They find Bryce Williams underneath the goal. He's going to be fouled by Cam Lee on the shot. No good. Two free throws on the way. Be Cam Lee's second foul of the game. First foul on the Mustangs in the third period. First free throw up by Bryce Williams. Good. Again, remind you, soccer team will be at home Thursday afternoon, 3 o'clock. Playoff game, big game, need all the support you can out for the men's soccer team. Thursday afternoon, 3 o'clock, Chazzy Moore Field on the campus of Pilla Academy. It will be streamed uh, if you can't make it. Steal by Simpson. 
quickly back to Collins Jenkins driving. He's going to take it all the way down the lane. He's going to be foul. Missed the shot. That foul will be on Grayson Jones, I believe. No, correction. J.J. Gilbert, his third foul. Free throw by Colin Jenkins, good. Again, the booster auction Thursday night. Wade Hanger out at the Greenwood LaFleur Airport. 5.30 social, 6.15 auction starts. 7 o'clock dinner will be served. Mustangs get it in against the press. Simpson backs out of it. 5.30 to play in the third period. Simpson leads it 58 to 23. Valente back out to Charlie Robbins. Puts up a three. Set dead on the rim for a minute. Came off. Long pass down the court. It's going to be to Gage Smith. Scores the basket. Timeout taken by Simpson to put in five subs. 5.09 to play. Running clock 60 to 23. 30-second timeout is going to be taken by Simpson. So they will stop it with 5.02. They'll have a running clock the rest of this game as Simpson leads it 60-23. to 23. Baseball started their season today at Jackson Academy. Don't know how that's going. But, didn't, uh, didn't go good from what I was good. told down okay. at halftime. They tend to do that, but uh, they still. Run road. Uh, baseball underway. Uh, me and Mr. Donahoe will be bringing – those games to you here in the uh, near future. Y'all do a great job on Thank that, Mr. Manu. I love to tune in and listen to y'all. Mustangs get it down in the lane. The ball is stolen by Simpson as they've brought in five subs. Brady McKinney, an eighth grader, is in. 12, Denver Carter, 10th grader. Number uh, three is Toby Smith, a ninth grader, rebound by the Mustangs. Charlie Robbins takes it down, scores the basket, and going to draw the foul in the game. Also is Will Carter, a 10th grader for Simpson. Charlie Robbins, Aiden Valente, J.J. Gilbert, Cam Lee, Grayson Jones in for the Mustangs. Jack Kirk will come in and replace Aiden Valente. Four minutes and 15 seconds with a running clock here. The third quarter. Rebound is claimed by Simpson's number 22, Calvin Smith, who's entered the game. Three-point basket taken by Simpson is going to go over the end line. No good. Mustangs will have the ball going the other way. Unless a drastic change happens here late in this game, Mustang basketball will come to the end tonight for the 23-24 season. I think either of these teams have anything to uh, hang their head about, though. Do not. It's been a fine season. The boys' basketball has been very fun. Been a tough year, but been very fun to broadcast. It's been a blast. Uh, been love, love doing it with you, Mr. Long. Watch it and play it. Uh, no quit in them. Fought hard. Uh, took a tough injury to Preston Blaylock yep. in the Saturday afternoon game on the campus against East Rankin. But uh, this men's basketball team has definitely had a better season. Absolutely. Uh, under the first-year coach of Andrew Mitchell. First, yeah, full year. Got the uh, interim tag uh, removed at the end of the season. And uh, uh, showing that's uh, their right to kind of put their faith in him uh, with that. Young kind of thrushed into uh, head coach and role a bit sooner than I think uh, he and everyone anticipated. But uh, was up to the challenge. And um, his boys play really hard for him. Dude, some great senior leadership by Charlie Robbins. Cam Lee, Preston Blaylock, and Grayson Jones. That's right. Four seniors that started for the Mustangs have given some great senior leadership. And I do want to mention as uh, Grayson Jones is fouled on the way up by, is that 22? I believe it's going to be on 22. Yes, be his first foul. But, uh, since that uh, injury to Preston uh, Blaylock, you know, he hasn't missed a game. He's out there. On the, we can't see on the bench now, but, uh, you know, he's, he's standing, engaged, uh, really, um, you know, a leader, leader on and off the court, even though he's unable to play, still uh, vital to this team. He is, and I don't think he's missed a practice the day of surgeries, broke, all that. I don't, well, we he, saw him on the sideline a few hours after uh, had his sling off and everything. <laughs> yep. Also like to thank the services of senior Ryan Knowles. Ryan has come in and gives some great minutes at times uh, 
has a he's a three point guy. Has a little awkward shot, but he's very deadly with the yeah, three point basket. Yeah, it's like basket. it's like a batting stance. You know, if it's working, you don't you don't tweak it, even if it looks yeah. kind of funky. So, but great. Ryan Knowles is giving the Mustangs a lot of good basketball over his career. Jump ball is going to be called. It'll be possession error to Simpson. One thirty to go in this period with a running clock. It's been a fun year for Mustang basketball. Yeah. Hate is going to come tonight in the first round of the North Half Tournament for both the men and women. Trace Harrell has entered the game for the Mustangs, as has Ryan Knowles. Also, David Swain is back in, who we have not seen in a while for some action after he hurt a hand. Yep. Ryan Knowles is going to get fouled. We'll go to the free throw line to put up some shots. Also entered the game is Charlie Dunn for the Mustangs. You know, looking forward uh, to next year. Um, yeah, the injury to uh, Preston, the senior, uh, devastating as it is. Um, you know, looking forward, that did uh, give some of the uh, the younger guys, the Valente and Kirk, uh, especially a bit more playing time. Um, that's going to benefit. You know, every little bit helps uh, going into next year. Yep. Taking it down the lane, kicking it back out. Another three-point loss by Simpson. Good. That was connected by Brady McKinney, an eighth grader. <laughs> the shooting barrage by Simpson carries on. So, but Trace Harrell is going to lose the ball, going to be backcourt. As he lost the dribble, goes back and gets it. So, also would like to thank all our sponsors this Absolutely. year of basketball that you see their ads running at timeouts and half. Uh, couldn't do it without a lot of their help. We have to pay extra money to broadcast tournament ball. It's going to be a travel by the Mustangs, but that's going to end the period. 65 to 28 at the end of the third period. We'll have a running clock to start the fourth period. Suresh has got a little... So for the contest, uh, JJ's got 10 points leading the way. Cam Lee with seven points with two in that quarter. And uh, we can get on camera. I don't, even, I don't even know if we're on or not. There you go. Uh, Aiden Valente has a score. Charlie with uh, six points. Grayson with two. Did uh, did Ryan hit both those free throws? I don't know if he did or not, Bill. I don't know. <laughs> I know he hit the first one. I think he hit yeah. the second one. And I'm missing two points for somebody, but the score is 65-28. Look, Donahoe and I talked at halftime. We talked about you winning that Silver Beaver Award for Boy Scouts of America. What a great honor. You know, Floyd won it a few years ago. Do you want it? Let's talk about that for a second. How proud are you to get that honor? I'm very proud. It's it's a service award. Um, I love youth and love to work with youth, and that's what it's a lot about is the youth out here at Pillow Academy, the youth and the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Um, I work with scouts all over the state, encouraging them to get their eagle, don't stop at the last. So I'm very honored that the Boy Scouts is going to honor me with it in Memphis on March the 21st. Yep, yep. So, uh, but I'm more, looking forward to it. We're coming to that event. We're looking forward to it. Both my wife and I are spending the night over there. We're going to see you get honored just like we saw Floyd get honored a few years ago. And a uh, huge honor, not only what you do. I know the, the action is going on, but we can just talk about this a little bit. Not only um, uh, for you, but just for all of the uh, scouts that came up here through, you know, my son, a, b a bunch of these kids. You've done a lot for them. You've been heavily involved with live streaming games and heavily involved with Mississippi State. And uh, what you do is special. And congratulations. Uh, just when did you, how did you find out? I uh, got a call from Floyd. Yeah. He, he had to contact me for the council yeah. well. and all. So and it, it's a great honor, but it's about the kids. And as I've said in some other statements, everybody asks why I stay involved in scouts, why I stay involved at Pillar. My children are gone. If, I, if you only do it for your children, you're not doing it for the community. Okay. Pillar Academy wouldn't exist if some forefathers and people hadn't a, gave a lot uh, for, to be here for the kids today. I agree. And it's not only your kids you're doing it for, it's for the community. That's it's, why you do these live stream games. I mean, your kids have been long gone, and here you are out here for all these games. So everybody asked me why I drive around. I actually drove in from Starkville tonight to do this game, and we'll drive back there tonight. Well, but it's it's all about the love of these kids yep. and, and what Pilla Academy does for our community. Yes. Educating and find, having our kids ready to go to the future. Yep. Uh, and... Um, they're going to be doing jobs we don't even know about. It wasn't too many years ago. What we're doing tonight was not possible. People Agreed. around the world get to watch this game. I watched Harris play bat football from Barcelona, Spain, and I could not watch <laughs> SEC football in Barcelona. Can you but, imagine that? So, But the Mustangs are going to get in some substitutes here. Great, Matthew great. Bowles and 
in William Hodges. Trace Harrell is at the line. Davis Swain, Walker McQueen has entered the game. Walker fought through an a injury all year to get back. Never thought he'd be back on the court. He worked hard, uh, rehabbed himself to get back. Fine to see him on the court. We saw him before Christmas. Came did, in at yes. Kirk. That we didn't really think we'd see him this year. Three-point basket taken by Simpson. Rebound's going to be claimed by Davis Swain. Davis hustling down the court, going to lay it up. Not scored. Rebound's going to be claimed from behind by Calvin Smith of Simpson. In the game, we got William Hodges, Matthew Bulls, Walker McQueen, Anderson Chaney, and Davis Swain. Five minutes and ten seconds to play. Another three-pointer taken by Simpson. Man. Good by Brady McKinney. This three-point barrage by Simpson continues on. They have been on fire tonight. The Mustangs have run into a buzz. So. I'm going to look up uh, in an NBA game, <laughs> highest three-point percentage in a game. Anderson Chaney puts up a shot. Going to be foul and go to the free throw line. That foul will be on 23. Noah Thornton be his first foul of the game. I'd like to give a big shout out to you, Mr. Banu, for all you do. Uh, you attend every game, junior high, high school, whatever. Get on the road early, set this equipment up, tear it down, take it back home, set it up the next day somewhere, broadcast a lot of games, and that's a lot of hours you sit here. Thank you for all you do for these young kids. Of course, Mr. Hill Academy. Happy to, and uh, congratulations again to you. You're as humble as they come. No, it's uh, <laughs> I like to talk about these things, but uh, it's a wonderful accomplishment, and uh, I know uh, the whole community is uh, is very proud. Jump ball there is going to be Mustangs ball on it. So thankful a lot of Mustang fans that, that join in out there and let us know about the commentaries. And uh, I had a lot of comments today at a meeting I was working in Starville about our broadcast. Dr. Keenum. President of Mississippi State was there and he talked to me about the broadcast and talked to me about the district this year not having a district tournament and the two Starkville teams did not make the North half. Interesting. The rest uh, did, but they just happened their boys and girls did not make it. His children had played for Starkville last year, so they've kept up it and aware with it. Uh, his wife had told me they still join in our broadcast every once in a while, so the Pillow live stream goes, goes wide and far. We thank all the fans that join in and, and let we hear from you occasionally, and we appreciate those. Thanks to Suresh for all his work and travel. Does play by, does Brownson with me when Madeline's not here. Does a great job with stats for the Mustangs. So we have a great crew. Great junior high crew has worked as I listen to most of those through the games. A lot of people support Mustang athletics. We need you to come out Thursday night to the booster auction. That's right. 5.30 social hour to Wade Hangar out at Greenwood LaFour Airport. 6.15 auction starts. 7 o'clock dinner will be served. The dinner is worth the price of admission and joining the booster club just to come to it. We read off a lot of items that aren't ag that Good are going to be auctioned. So come out, uh, bid on them, help us raise some money for the booster club who helps provide this equipment and a lot of things at Pillar. Shot taken, rebound by Trace Harrell. Coming down, Trace has the ball taken away from him. Going back the other way is Jaden Smith. Jaden going to lay it up, not score the basket. Rebound's going to be on the floor. Lost by, by Simpson. It'll be Mustangs ball going the other way. Two minutes to play in the game. I'd like to uh, get some kind words from uh, Miss Clark and uh, Coach Prather for uh – it's in uh, you know support, so we, we thank you. And I think uh, Ms. Clark uh, said it best that you know no matter the score, it's always a great day to be a Mustang. It is, it is. We've got a lot of great things at Pillow Academy. Uh, got a lot of fan support, a lot of leadership. Three point basket by Ryan Nose, no good. Rebound by Charlie Dunn. Foul is going to be, I believe, on William Hodges. Be his first foul of the game. His third foul. First foul on the Mustangs in this period. Three-point basket again taken by Simpson. No good. Rebound is claimed by Simpson. Put back by Calvin Smith. 1-10 to play in the contest. Simpson leads it 70-31. to Ryan Knows got it out high back over to Trace. Fakes a three, drives, puts up a two. Gets the roll around the rim and scores the basket. 
Got a timeout, gonna have a substitution as number four, Jaden Smith's gonna enter the game back for Simpson. Simpson had nobody to throw it to. Jaden Smith come back and gets it. 70 to 33, 45 seconds to play in this contest with a running clock. Taking down the lane, shots missed, rebounds claimed by William Hodges. He's gonna be fouled by number 13, Braden Overby. 33 seconds running clock, Mustangs will have it on the end line. Trace Harrell loses the ball, kicks it back to William Hodges. Trace Harrell's driving, 18 seconds in this contest. Ryan Knowles back out high to Trace Harrell. Trace is double teamed, gets it to Hodges in the middle. Hodges is gonna hit Ryan Knowles, but Ryan, he broke for the goal. Be a turnover by the Mustangs. Jaden Smith took it out without ever letting have the official have it. That's gonna end this game. Mustangs are going to lose it 70 to 33, and Mustang basketball will come to an end for the 23-24 season. Mustang men lost a tough one here tonight, 70 to 33. The Mustang ladies lost a two-point game to Leak. So the Mustang basketball comes to the end in the first round of the North Half tournament. Mr. Benu, it's been a pleasure this year. Sure has. So thank you, Mr. Long. Don't forget soccer. Thursday afternoon, 3 o'clock, playoff game on the campus of Pillar Academy. Come out and support the Mustangs there. Come out to the auction Thursday night. 